Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Chorietal Podcast. Today I have with me Claudio. Claudio is a student in uh, philosophy at the University of Bologna. Uh, Claudio, could you give us a summary about your education track so far, what your interests are? And, uh, yeah, <laughs> in this is a very topics. long story, but <laughs> yeah. Um, when I had to choose what university to do, I chose philosophy for the etymology of the name, mm-hmm. that is philo, love, mm-hmm. and sophie, sophia, that is knowledge. Mm-hmm. So I always love knowledge, so I say, okay, I have to do philosophy. Um, I'm very happy that I made this mm. choice. But after, the, um, after three years, yes, uh, I stopped to study philosophy. Mm. Not, not totally. I continue to study some philosophy, but I started, I, um, started to feel the... Um, desire to study in more details a, a wide range of discipline from uh, neuroscience to physics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started to study my personal uh, private private right. <laughs> university courses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, basically um, I study mathematics, physics on sure. my own. In, mm-hmm. uh, you so you feel uh, you feel as though um, you have now penchant towards the philosophy of science more than other types of philosophy. Uh, there are there are other um, fields of philosophy that I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. Uh, philosoph- philosophy of science, of course, is one may, maybe my my philosophy love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I really appreciate also philosophy of language mm-hmm. that is also connected in a variety of ways to to all the rest of philosophy. Of course, of course. And uh, philosophy of knowledge that is something a little bit different from philosophy of science. Mm-hmm. There are many correlations. As in epistemology or epistemology is philosophy. No, I think that in English. Mm-hmm. There's uh, epistemology, it's philosophy of science, and philosophy of knowledge is just philosophy. I, I'm not sure, oh, because okay. in Italian we have two different terms, but there is no translation for the yeah, second one, so okay. I don't know exactly. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't... I, I think epistemology, at least uh, as in the way that I've used it so far, it's of knowledge in general, so how can you know anything ah, okay, rather okay, than okay. something scientific? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So going back to, you know, Descartes and his demon yeah. problem, I mean, that falls into epistemology. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how I usually associate it. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, mm-hmm. you see, comprehend both. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. So uh, you are passionate then about, yeah, philosophy of uh, physics, of science, of mathematics. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> actually, uh, uh, I was very surprised because uh, we met during a party and we actually yeah. talked about GR and uh, I was yeah. incredibly surprised to see that um, actually you studied physics and mathematics uh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. your own and you're a philosophy student and this is, yeah. uh, at least in my experience, so uncommon. Usually people, you know, okay, choose some, uh, the way, at least the people that I talk to. Yeah. Uh, maybe choose a philosophy of morality. Okay, they have five books, they read all the books, they do some essays, but that's it. But you, on the other hand, you have the option of reading Bertrand Russell and uh, reading a lot of other philosophers, Einstein and da da da, that have written about, and physicist Kuhn, uh, like we will uh, yeah. talk about uh, uh, shortly. Uh, f- former physicists that have written about the philosophy of science and you could have done the same just you know I, I just write some essays I'm interested but you actually took the time to go into the mathematics books yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. physics textbooks to to learn for yourself so I, I'm yeah because I love no know, I really love knowledge at at a certain level I think that you must study mathematics and physics in mm-hmm. more detail that uh, than you do in a philosophy course mm-hmm. to avoid to say bullshit or <laughs> yeah, like of many of my colleagues and uh... it, it's actually funny mm-hmm. my uh, I I always refer to this uh, to this statement I had a philosophy professor in university and I actually took two courses of philosophy mm-hmm. when I was in my bachelor's 
And in my second course of philosophy, my philosophy teacher was saying about, it was philosophy of science, it was called. Mm. That, uh, you know, philosophy as we were thinking about it like 200 years ago is dead now. Ah. <laughs> because now, you know, you have all these uh, scientists that come about with okay. a new theory and now you have to reinvent the world. Okay. Before it was just, okay, we can do metaphysics, we can um, suppose, we can build an entire system mm -hmm. like Kant uh, from, yeah, uh, from yeah. bottoms up. But now you cannot. I mean, you know, it's no longer a case of, uh, you know, what, whatever Kant says is true because we can, yeah, yeah, we have yeah, some counter, counter examples that are empirical based yeah, on, you yeah, know, experiment yeah, yeah. and somehow this contains more reality than, I mean, the metaphysics of the one, one person, you know, yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah, if yeah. we go to Plato, then, you know, his metaphysics definitely is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I so. hate metaphysics, <laughs> I'm honest. Uh, but sometimes we need it, so mm -hmm. yeah, of course, <laughs> we have of to deal in yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little a necessity. bit with It's a necessity, of course. Uh, and today, uh, me and Claudio will discuss about philosophy of science and uh, physics in particular. I think, I mean, I'm a physicist. Uh, I don't know much about uh, maybe mathematics and history. I mean, I know bits and pieces because uh, unavoidably studying physics, you, you, do, you do a little bit of history of mathematics. Um, but we are going to discuss about the philosophy of physics and uh, about some uh, some problems uh, like the demarcation problems, what uh, can be taken to be science, for example. Uh, can we distinguish between uh, homeopathy and, uh, I don't know, general relativity? I mean, is, yeah. there, is there a fundamental <laughs> yeah, difference? Yeah. Or, uh, um, and I'll, I'll give some, some more motivations onwards. And another motivation, which is maybe a little bit more personal because it comes from uh, my side being a physicist and, and so on. Uh, thing is, I mean, uh, at this point I've, I've done, this is my fifth year of um, higher education in, in physics, only theoretical physics that I've done. And usually the approach that we take in uh, learning new physics is, okay, you're given uh, a lot of material, new material, but usually the most fundamental um, let's say statements are never fully looked into in any depth you mm. have to accept them yeah and also yeah. usually when you do physics the thing is you have problems to solve and sometimes you know you're just being given okay use this trick and it will work yeah, yeah. but then you it's not even explained to you why should you trust the trick like this yeah okay, it, it works i see that it works but why why should i do this leap of faith and it gets even worse the higher you go for example uh, I was laughing with uh, with one of my friends studying uh, quantum field theory, and this is, I will just give a, a very short example. At some point, you have to deal with these infinite integrals anyways in quantum field theory. It's something called um, renormalization that you have mm -hmm. to do and so on, and basically it's the removal of an infinity in some form or another. And uh, the thing is, the way that you come up with some precise statements about uh, fundamental particles at some point you have to, uh, the way that it was explained in the book, okay, the, definitely the process of coming up with that formula, it's not like they teach you in the book. It's yeah, never like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way that they teach you in the book is like this. Okay, we start with this, um, with this integral that we already know what it means. It's well defined in our usual nice classical, uh, classical environment. We have no problem. But then you go to to quantum environment, and now yeah. you start you start having some some issues with how you define the integral and so on. And the way that they say it in the book, okay, now look, we have this integral which might be infinite. Now multiply and divide by it, oh. <laughs> and okay. then you get what you want. Okay. But you know, it's it's like so curious. I mean, it might yeah. be if it says it says like it literally says one line before this integral. You know, looks like this, which might be infinite. You don't yeah. know. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. okay, next step, multiply and then divide. <laughs> it's like you multiply and divide by zero. Of course yeah, you yeah. get what you want, you know, you can get anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, usually yeah. this is the way that uh, it happens in, uh, like, the higher you go, it's like you have to take a larger leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, in, in my opinion, it's unacceptable because you, the more you study, the more you, you feel like, you know, you, you're, okay. You feel like you're sh standing on shaky ground. It might not be, but you're not aware of, you know, how much groundwork has been done before you. You, you know, f for me, as a, you know, in my experience, uh, you're faced with all these uh, new assumptions, big assumptions, great ideas, but you cannot. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you literally don't have any any tools to deal with that. So, 
Uh, definitely there is a problem with uh, the way that we are being taught physics because we never go philosophically into any detail into the assumptions that we make yeah. to get our results. So this is one of the big motivations. And uh, definitely the other big motivation is that um, the demarcation problem, which is uh, separating science from pseudoscience. Some examples of pseudoscience would be yeah, homeopathy and uh, maybe we could say maybe it's not politically correct uh, <laughs> Chinese medicine. I, uh, you know, uh, let's yeah, uh, I don't know exactly <laughs> Chinese medicine, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I mean, that is yeah, at least just uh, stereotypically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 there are, uh, let's say, there is proof pro and uh, yeah, yeah, against, yeah. Uh, a lot of proof against and uh, a lot of... Does uh, smoking cause cancer, for example, which was a very debated issue mm. a very long time and uh, there have been a lot of papers on, on this issue saying that it's not actually, that it's the tar that causes the cancer and the tar is not, def it's not um, necessarily created by the smoke that you inhale and it's uh, also created by the fumes that you mm. breathe and so on. Mm. So, you know, uh, at some point, whenever it comes to dealing with maybe political issues, uh, there comes a case where you have to distinguish between is this true or is, is it not? And you have to come to, you know, think of, uh, you know, what is truth, how, yeah, how do yeah. we deal with these questions. Um, so this is another, um, uh, another big motivation of uh, why we talk about the philosophy of physics, because physics, you know, it's one of the sciences that we usually take without too much uh, mental effort to be true yeah, by default, yeah, yeah. like, okay, yeah, yeah. it's physics, it's true. Because it's an art science. Yeah, it's exactly. Own, it's uh, like, uh, ah, okay, uh, this is what physicists say, then it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fine. And uh, look, we have computer, look, we have, uh, you know, light bulb and electricity and, you know, it works. And, but uh, yeah, as we will see, there are definitely some, uh, some issues with how we define these things, what we take to be true, if it's actually necessary to believe in the theories that help us to build these things. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are definitely some issues that we will talk about. So let's um, let's start uh, with a bit of history. Okay. I, I think I honestly think that every every nice conversation starts with a little okay. bit of history. Okay. So, um, so let's take uh, the Aristotelian worldview, which was the dominating worldview for yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. up until I don't know, fifteenth, so up until the, the Ren Renas oh, oh. Re Renascement. Uh, yeah. How do you say? Ah, uh, in English, one second, I, I have to edit this, uh, uh, Enlightenment, Enlightenment. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, up until Enlightenment to Da Vinci and uh, going yeah, onwards, yeah. Uh, it was Aristotelian view uh, for uh, everything. So, um, can you help us? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I, I'm not very well prepared on history of the things because uh, is not science, mm -hmm. as we call so mm -hmm. I was not totally interested, but the basic mm -hmm. uh, principle of Aristotelian uh, way of discover mm -hmm. new thing is uh, intuition. Aristotle thought that we have direct intuition on something that in particular are the final causes of of the events mm -hmm. and uh, his way of explaining something is referring it to the final causes for example mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, if uh, if the question is why i came here to uh, why i'm speaking with you okay. about philosophy of science in front of a camera mm -hmm. uh, aristotle who would refer the answer to the future, saying, oh, mm, he wants to be famous. I, okay. I think that it's <laughs> okay. difficult becoming famous talking about yes. philosophy of science. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think so too. This is, uh, the, the big difference with the, the, the su successive mm -hmm. um, way of consider the ex scientific explanation is the in nowadays, the explanation, uh, the um, scientific explanation, mm -hmm. refer to the past. We mm -hmm. we consider that something is explained if we uh -huh, right. find mm -hmm. all past causes that uh -huh. produce the events that are happening now. I actually like very much this way of explaining yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Aristotle. 
okay, Aristotelian view was looking at the purpose of it to yeah, explain the yeah, event, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. we are looking at causes, which is yeah the yeah. dominating worldview after you know Newton yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And oh, the only way to refer explanation to the future, it was intuition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But intuition is not something to Do you know of any, of any, let's say, explanation that is uh, airtight in this way? As in, we look at the purpose and we definitely um, find it to be actually true. Do you know of any example like that? Uh, example... Example... Um, of things that we can actually explain. Yes, as in you can explain it via the purpose and it actually turns out this is, you know, this is correct. Uh, okay. Of course, could happen. I think um, in most cases when we speak about human action, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, for, for example, well, yeah, could yeah. be true that I'm here because I want to become uh -huh. famous. Okay, okay. Uh, it's not true, but it could <laughs> yes. be true. Okay. And uh, the reference to the future, he want to be famous. Uh, we can translate the reference to the future mm -hmm. for uh, we, um, with a past cause. So... For example, my neurons are made in some way that produced my willingness to become famous. So I explain, so it's true mm -hmm. that I, I'm here because... So, uh, so in a sense, by using this, this sort of uh, approach, the, um, the truth value of a statement is, let's say, varies with time, as in it becomes true after you become famous <laughs> and now it's not necessarily famous or is it... Uh, is no, it no, works, I or? think that is... Time independent. Uh, that, okay, the truth uh, value of the, that statement. Okay, then yeah, it's, it's yeah, very yeah. difficult to prove. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah, yeah. Of statement. But I, I, I was actually thinking of uh, I have I have this example in mind that I I thought a while back. So for example, think of a uh, we have rain that let's say it's coming in uh, five hours or whatever, and the, the plants in the in all the field uh, let's say they open up. Is it because the rain the rain is coming because the plants open mm, up or okay. the plants open up because the rain is coming? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is an interesting question. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's cause or purpose. Uh, like maybe it's cause yeah. versus purpose. If we if we explain, like if we say that, that the rain is coming, that's why they close. It's a cause. But if uh, okay, if the rain is if they. Okay, if they open up because the rain is coming, it's a cause. But if the rain is coming because they open, yeah, then it's a purpose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the rain See, just comes uh, where yes, the... it's a purpose. P probably, uh, yeah. No, no, it's yeah, yeah. So I, I agree with that. Uh, the point is that mm -hmm. uh, is not reliable reason yes, like yes. that if we want to have. A, not certainty because the problem of studying philosophy is that mm -hmm. you understand that you can never have certainties mm -hmm. uh, exception made for uh, mathematics and uh, mm -hmm. what i actually see if i say in my vis visual field mm -hmm. there is a, a red pixel is true mm -hmm. But uh, we have no certainties for anything else, and this is very bad. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as in air tight. As so, thing, but, but yeah. for a, we can have a degree of certainty mm -hmm. that is not one hundred percent. But mm -hmm. and reasoning uh, on purpose. Oh, i another example came in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in a lot of cases. Um, an explanation that refer to purposes mm -hmm. uh, could be found in um, evolution, for example. Ah, okay. A lot of okay. time when we speak, why we have uh, um, a broca areas in our brain? Mm -hmm. uh, because we have to speak to survive. This is not a bad answer. Yeah, why is it the brain split? Or yeah, the, oh, the okay. broca areas is the, um, the areas of the brain ah, in okay. which we process ah, sure, sure. language mm -hmm. with um, Winkerman, uh, with ah, I, I, don't I, I don't know name, yeah, but okay, okay, yes, yes. Broca and Winkerman areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Uh, so you can say um, the, the purpose is survive. No, actually in evolution, the purpose is uh, reproduce. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a Broca areas because our mm -hmm. purpose is to reproduce and Broca's and Winkerman areas help us to reproduce. Okay, okay. Um, and this is not a bad answer, but I think that is not don't get the real point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because evolution is a, a logic fact that in any case refers to the past uh, because we had no our ancestor had some genes some of them reproduce some of them other not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's but okay so. uh, but yeah usually usually the yeah the way that we justify it's okay maybe this um, bird has red feathers because it helps yeah. reproduce. Yeah, yeah 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 but is it is it that okay because it's based on purpose it's definitely a different type of explanation I yeah. Think, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, yeah, that this is a very good example. Would you be able to say uh, why the Aristotelian worldview was so dominant for so, so long? Um, I can give a naive answer based on let's my try, try. personal thought. I mm -hmm. never studied in detail some social historical mm -hmm. aspects of this, but I think that um, Aristotle was definitely a genius and in his time he built a very, very complex system. He, sp he spoke about anything mm -hmm. from uh, poetry to physics to metaphysics. He, he spoke about everything and in a very coherent way mm -hmm. and um, that also fit with with some um, religious uh, beliefs that was diffused in the were yes, diffused yes, in yes, the yes. population. Ah, maybe yeah. This is so. I a... think that the reason is something like that, mm -hmm. and yeah. all, um, also that um, in the, the the century one, they don't have a lot of instrument to uh, verify a theory. Um, they don't have, um, I don't know the English name. Uh, the, uh, the binoculars. Yeah, binoculars, or stuff like that. So if we say, mm -hmm. oh, um, outside our um, world, there's a big sphere with this point. Mm, but still, Nobody they, could say. Still, they, oh, they, knew, no. they knew precise things uh, even then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, yes, of course. They but like in general, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. no this, this, this is just a. Uh, this is not a true, historically mm -hmm. true ex yes, yes. Uh, example. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, because yeah, in general in they thinking, had yeah. few things to verify mm -hmm. what is true, what is not. Mm -hmm. So I think that the success depends on this and mm -hmm. for the connection with the other beliefs. Belief yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you make an important point. I think at least with the history of Europe, because the church was actually reliant on a yeah, yeah, philosophy yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, justifying, uh, make justifying, or maybe let's say strengthening yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. system of, um, of Christianity. Yeah, they used a lot in the West. Yeah, they used a lot of, um, a lot of ideas coming from Aristotelian worldview. And then that's why the, we have the Galileo, Kepler, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Problems and um, and so on and so on. So yeah, the the church definitely played a role. But now, if we move uh, aside aside from Christianity, I don't know how it happened in the other places. For example, in China, ah. I don't know how they deal de dealt with that. Or me too, because mm, I never studied. Mm -hmm. I think that is a problem that we have in general in Europe that we are too much uh, Eurocentric and we don't know anything about Asia, yeah, yeah, Africa, we, we don't, we don't do that too much Latin about America. I don't, I, I really don't know anything mm. on uh, yeah, yeah. what happened at the same sure, time sure, no, in right. China. So if we are to hint, um, to give like a brief, uh, brief summary of um, your intuition is we didn't have so many instruments to check so many of the statements. 
Yeah. So with the Aristotelian worldview, we had I I, I think it was Aristoteles or Plato. I don't remember which one. And they even made like an essay on the meteorology and why oh, okay. why clouds happen and <laughs> okay, why yeah, why yeah. it rains and uh, you know even today it's hard to <laughs> yeah, yeah to yeah. predict if it's going to rain or not. But uh, yeah, meteorology I, is based on we uh, thanks to meteorology born uh, mathematics of chaos. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult yes, to yes. predict something yes, chaotic yes. like yeah, weather. Yeah, of course, we have ensembles and anyways, we end up with probabilities and even yeah, 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 yeah. there is, uh, you know, you have that fundamental... Uh, yeah, probability is uh, another very problematic <laughs> question in philosophy, yeah, very, yeah. very, very problematic. Of course. So maybe it was the lack, the lack of instruments and uh, what else would you say apart from the lack and of instruments? And the fact that um, the, the, the whole system that Aristotle uh, mm -hmm. um, built up... Uh, it was coherent within itself. Was co yeah, was coherent, uh, was coherent at mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. and fit well with the um, belief diffused on the population. Mm -hmm. Re religious religion is one of them, but yes, also yes. for other things, also uh, for economics, mm -hmm. um, because he speaks also about economics, sure, sure, sure. The, um, the, the use of money, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that for the time, his system explained something, explain mm -hmm. a lot of things. So they had positive mm, reason to think, oh, maybe it's right. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the instrument to find negative uh, reason to think, mm -hmm. so, mm, for that, maybe what he says is totally the, crazy. The black swan problem. Yeah. <laughs> all, all swans are white, if you cannot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and the fact that fits with uh, their beliefs yeah, and in general human when uh, someone say told you something that you want to hear mm -hmm. you just accept <laughs> yeah usually it ah, happens perfect and then so the... i think but it's very naive i yes, this yes. is a question of uh, so, so sociology sociology yes and of I, I science think, yeah, and yeah, history yeah. And, and i think it's, it's a point worth mentioning because People have, uh, and it's something uh, about the book that we actually both looked at, uh, um, understanding the science of uh, philosophy, the philosophy of science, excuse me. Um, and it's one of the points that they make. Uh, it's actually the evolution of science. You know, we take it to be like an accumulation of knowledge and we know more and more as time goes by and so on. And it feels like it's airtight, but we actually, we don't know how science evolves. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. funny. So yeah, it's it's part of that sociology that you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. How how do actually people take this uh, system of uh, statements to be true now? And you know, one hundred years ago, it was a different statement that they, they would be taken as true yeah, by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is not a clear uh, clear path from how this this statement evolved into this statement. I mean, we can say that okay. We have atomic bomb and uh, whatever. Now yeah, people started yeah, yeah. believing more and more. But the and not uh, okay. We can take this this problem of the evolution of science at uh, the largest scale possible, as in uh, the whole humanity believing that this is true. But we can look into it even more, uh, like only the community, scientific community. Mm -hmm. Even within the scientific community, yeah. there are parties that they don't believe this statement, and uh, you know they are. They have arguments not to believe that statement, and after a while, they start all converging into one statement. This one statement yeah, is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not a not a clear not a clear path. As yeah, because uh, there are uh, two separate uh, questions in science. Uh, from one side, we have the heuristics mm -hmm. that scientists could use, the concrete way in... The methods, process... In which the, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other side, we have the theoretical, pure theoretical reasoning that deal with um, the, the logic behind our scientific assumption. And 
when we speak about the historical evolution mm-hmm. of science, what happened, what uh, scientific uh, community believe, uh, yes, yes. is a question of the co- is concrete question. It's not theoretic. So mm-hmm. even the theoretic field is a chaos. So the concrete one is. Mm, I don't know the word is uh, um, an understandable. Un- okay, okay. I think, but probably again, sociologists would uh, yeah, answer say, in a better yeah, yeah. way. Than yeah, yeah, of course. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's just a group of people that take yeah, some statements. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even, you know, every single person does not believe 100%, you know, that these statements. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 We have plenty of reasons to believe that uh, any scientific theory, you know, even though it gives us uh, like adequate um, empirical observation, you know, later on we say that we see that it's not one hundred percent true. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> There's also a, it's called um, uh, I'm not good with the name, but I think mm-hmm. that the name is meta uh, pe- pessimist meta induction something like that okay uh, 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 that is the problem that we scientific method we can say there are a lot of debates mm-hmm. also here but we can say that is based on induction mm-hmm. um, and course. inductively mm-hmm. the maybe not all but almost all past theory uh, was false revealed false. So if we reason inductively, we have to conclude that also all the theory that we have now are false. As in, to put it simply, 1000 years from now, we believe that everything we believe now, it's actually stupid yeah. or yeah, so simple. Exactly, or... exactly. And 2000 years yeah, later, yeah. they say, yeah. oh, <laughs> it be always like that. Yes. And there are a few answers. Some people say, yeah, it's true, but if we look at the whole process, we um, uh, scientific theories tend mm-hmm. to the truth, like yes. a limit. In oh, okay, uh, okay. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. They, yeah, exactly, asymptotic. And um, some other scientists. There is and something as truth. Yeah, yeah uh, this is another, big, <laughs> another problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Everywhere there are big problems. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in with philosophy. This is the the bad and good thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, other people say, oh no, it's not like that because actually past theories um, was of a different type mm-hmm. because um, wasn't too rigorous. Um, <laughs> don't apply scientific method as we do today. Yes, yes. So I, I don't know either. Yeah, because mm-hmm. this second answer is a historical yeah, it's fact. Yeah, it's the Kuhn, Kuhn way of... Yeah, Kuhn, Kuhn uh, yeah, and, it's and we can, we can yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. Go, go into that later. So um, now we mentioned that, okay, Aristotelian worldview was dominating for a while, then why it was successful, but then it changed. Yeah. Now we mentioned that, okay, there is also a problem with the way that scientific belief changes on a grand scale, on a, on a small scale. This is definitely not a closed problem. We don't know exactly how it happens granularly. Okay, there is a couple of people that believe one thing and then from two people it spreads. How does it yeah. spread? Yeah. You know, it's a complicated, uh, complicated question to answer in any, in any meaningful way. So, um, j- just to have uh, some, some sense of continuity, so Aristotelian worldview changed, and that changed with uh, Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, all that stuff, with, uh, you know, now we have uh, better instruments to quantify all these yeah. uh, angles yeah. that we see in the sky with the stars, uh, da, 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 and, uh, you know, the, the earth goes around the sun, or is it the sun that goes around the earth, and, you know, all, all, all that stuff. And uh, with Aristotelian worldview, we had that the Earth is, um, I mean, the Earth is the center of the universe, the egocentric uh, worldview, and uh, big debate, church, Galileo gets uh, <laughs> gets sent <laughs> home. Defied, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sends home, becomes blind, asks his uh, 
It, was it his slave or his... Uh, uh, did he have something like an apprentice? I don't know. I, because the, I don't after know. a while, like the apprentice was taking uh, measurements and was mm. writing for him, either slave. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if slavery was... Uh, no, yeah. I think not, yeah. but I'm not maybe, sure. Yeah, maybe because... apprentice, maybe apprentice. Yeah. So anyways, we had uh, up to the 1600s, we had um, a lot better uh, measurement instruments. And yeah, maybe uh, it's worth mentioning that yeah, the binoculars were kind of a, um, a big step up in, yeah. determining, yeah, yeah. Uh, in determining truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because before that, we would just be looking with our own eyes. And as you, as you said, there is some, um, some variety of truth that we take for granted yeah. uh, in a less problematic way to be actually true. Uh, like um, in front of me, there is a red, uh, a red parcel yeah, yeah, on the wall or something like that. We, we literally take this to be true. It's an observation. It's, yeah. Uh, so the same, the same with the with the binoculars. Now you know we see the moon uh, far away, but now we can see it closer and we see more detail. And it's the same. It's like eyesight. It's such a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are so yeah, convinced by that... eyesight, even though even our eyesight, you know, has yeah, <laughs> all yeah, these yeah. problems with uh, you can have an illusion and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. When, when the instrument, the binoculars, came about, then it was easier for people to start um, believing. Let's say, now we see that other planets have moons. Ah, okay, why, why do other planets have moons? I mean, yeah. they should all uh, moon around yeah, the Earth, yeah, not yeah. moon around exactly. other planets and so on. So, so this is kind of uh, maybe the first big scientific revolution, maybe. Mm. Because Aristotelian yes, worldview, yes. I, I don't know. Maybe even Aristotelian worldview was a revolution in its time. I, I have no idea. don't know. I think not because, oh, or maybe yes. Dep this depends on what we how we define revolution. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what. I know a little bit. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. before Aristotle what people think about uh, this. So, uh, well, this is a question of word anyway yeah yeah, so, yeah but yeah i think that the real first great uh, mm -hmm. scientific revolution is was, uh, yeah, uh, yes, with Galileo, and, Galileo and, Copernicus, and then it changed yeah yeah and um and also it was a revolution because we had a set of statements that we taken to be true like a pretty long list let's say yeah, yeah. and then we had to reinvent <laughs> Or at least change a lot of the statements so that they, um, let's say, they are compatible with what you observe. And uh, yeah. in the end, that's, that is the process that, that we take. We, we make observation and we see that it does not come to terms with what we believe to be true. And then we make changes and, you know, that's one simplistic way. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, like, you, uh, because we were talking about the accumulation of knowledge, like you said before, sometimes it's like you have to completely get rid yeah, of what yeah, was before yeah, yeah. and put something completely new. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You cannot like, okay, we have one list of 100 statements. No, you throw away 100 statements. Yeah, exactly. And then you replace it with yeah. 50 maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, usually yeah. the way of science, it's uh, you replace it with something that is more simple. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, more simple, but often also more general. Yes, so more general, with yeah. this statement you can understand more thing yes. not not always yeah, but... yeah yeah so it's even even now it's kind of uh, interesting to think about because we say that it's an accumulation but in some sense okay it's more adequate but it's like less yeah. less yeah, stuff yeah, 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 yeah. that we, we need to take to be uh, true in some sense so uh, but but as we as we mentioned so far um, still you know this scientific understanding is fallible yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We believe something to be true, and you mentioned about the problem of induction. Yeah. Um, so the first person that came up with the problem of induction was... Um, uh, can you remind me? I think that was Hume. Hume, yeah. The, yeah, the most famous. Say, yes, I don't know yes. if... Yeah, maybe the first one. Or, but, yeah, but yeah, yeah usually it's considered yes, the yes, first yeah. one, I guess. So. Hume, uh, who lived, uh, I think, the 1500s, like... 
1600 no it's uh, that, that sort of area like it's 500 years ago you know something like that yeah like yeah, yeah. i'm not ago. sure but ah. i think no, no, because it, it, with dates i ah, okay, okay. But... No, but it's roughly it's roughly that yeah, yeah 500 yeah. which is incredibly yeah. long time the cart as well the cart was also yeah, 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 yeah like 500 years ago and they were still thinking about these problems and yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. even before then uh, sometimes i also read a book before even before them, we, we take, you know, enlightenment to be this period of, okay, uh, revolution. Uh, now we get a lot of science out and, you know, we, this is kind of the point that science starts. But even before, uh, you know, people, people think that we didn't make progress, but people were thinking about, you know, the number of stars in the universe, even yeah, before yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They were asking questions. But the thing is, like you say, the instruments were lacking and so on, and you couldn't quite prove in the, in the same way. Uh, but but now with the problem of induction. So like you said, um, one one way uh, that you used induction before is it it turns out that everything we take to be true before yeah it gets replaced later. So then again you could you could think that everything you think now it's kind of wrong because yeah. it will anyways get replaced later. Yeah. But okay, this is one way of using induction. But actually, induction it's also a method used in science to reveal new yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. Ah, in general, induction is a method to make inference, like deduction. Mm -hmm. did, did, I don't know the... Yeah, yeah, the, deduction. Okay, deduction. deduction. Yeah. Um, the point of deduction is that if you are sure about the premise, mm -hmm. premise, 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 uh, the conclusion is you have 100% certainty about the conclusion. Yes. Uh, and is this called synthetic knowledge or...? Uh, uh, no, synthetic... Yeah, no, or... no, no, this is an analytic knowledge. Anal oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, analytic yeah. and synthetic, I, I didn't... Yeah, 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 yeah. Analytic is this because um, given a set of statements, mm -hmm. you can deduce clo with your eyes closed in the top of a tower in the <laughs> yes. desert, you can continue to make inference and accept new statements. Yes, yes. Uh, inductive reasoning is different because you need to um, accumulate some kind of eviden evidences. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can stay with your blind eyes in the top of the tower <laughs> in the middle of a desert. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the conclusion is not sure. And this is the very big problem. Um, because uh, the general point is uh, to believe that there are a kind of homogeneity between the future and the past. Mm -hmm. So what if in the condition X, in the past, always up to, up and the fact uh, A, mm -hmm. we think that also in the future will be like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, how can we say this? We don't have an argument to yeah, exactly, yeah. claim that future will be like the past. And there are Russell mm -hmm. uh, make a funny, fu funny. I don't know, <laughs> no, funny, funny. It's, it's a, a funny it's the right word to use. story. Um, to to help people understand the problem of induction. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, uh, I will speak about chicken. He spoke about the um, the animals uh, eaten by Americans in Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Turkey. Is, ah, Turkey. Okay. And uh, so I speak about this naive turkey mm -hmm. because every day uh, a person came with, uh, to the turkey with some food. Mm -hmm. So the turkey started to think, oh, every day this person brings me food. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, day one, day two, day 100. So inductively, he, he, he concluded that Every day for in the future, this person will bring him to the, the food. Mm -hmm. 
uh, arrive Thanksgiving Day mm. and the same person who brings the food to the turkey cut his neck. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, turkey understand that maybe inductive uh, reasoning is not <laughs> too <late>. so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too late, of course. Uh, and th- this is the funny story of the point uh, of, of Hume. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hume, uh, the famous example, was the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the past, sun... Uh, rise, ra- r- yeah, rise, 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 rises uh, every t- every day. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow we mm-hmm. can say the sun will rise. But actually, we can say it. Uh, in the same way of the turkey uh, <laughs> was better for the turkey. Don't mm-hmm. think that forever for the future. Tomorrow the person will bring me the food. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the point of. Induction in general, of course, there are uh, problems <laughs> like every time because, uh, for example, if I okay, I say day one up and this, day two up and this, huh? this is called induction by enumeration. Mm-hmm. I um, accumulate some facts yeah. and they say, mm-hmm. but uh, it seems that is not always the case. For example. Uh, in the past, I, I breathe every day, mm-hmm. but I don't think that I will breathe, that I for will the, breathe yeah. for uh, the whatever. rest of the future, yes. because I know that one day I will die. Um, in other cases, for example, when um, a kid touches uh, the fire, for mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. it seems that he doesn't need to touch the fire 10, 20, 100 times. Mm-hmm. After the first time, he understands, okay, mm-hmm. uh, touch the fire is bad yes, yes. <laughs> because hurt my finger. And so induction by enumeration is uh, maybe a naive mm-hmm. induction. But the general point, uh, there are different type of induction. People start to, oh, okay. They, uh, with probability also, bias theorem, you can add whatever you want, mm-hmm. but the basic principle is always the same, that the few, the, the, the there is an emo- homogeneity yes. between... Few. Oh, this is about time. Of mm-hmm. course, we can talk also about space. For example, I see a white swan, mm-hmm. two white swan, three white swan, and they conclude, oh, every yeah, the, yeah, so. swan are white. Mm-hmm. But maybe... Mm, 10,000 kilometers away, there's a black swan. Yes, yes. And this is induction. And uh, the other problem with induction is that uh, it's unjustified, it's impossible to justify it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is kind of a fake problem because deduction is exactly the same. Is it deduction? Really? Yeah, because... um, the only way to justify deduction is using logic deduction. Mm-hmm. So it's circular and circular reasoning are... So why, why is it circular? What do you... uh, that you uh, prove what you want to prove uh, using what you want to prove. If I have to prove the validity of deduction, I can't use deduction because if I use oh, deduction okay. I'm assuming that yes, is true that but is I have true. to prove that is true not okay, just okay. assume it okay okay and deduction is like this uh, we can prove that uh, if uh, every person is uh, will die one day will die and I am a person I will die mm-hmm. one day I will die we can prove it uh, don't using deductive reasoning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so inductive is the, um, exactly the same thing. We can justify induction in an in, uh, inductive way. Mm-hmm. For example, saying uh, in the past, um, the great, the very, very great majority of, uh, of the times when we use induction W- w- they it works. work. Yeah, it mm-hmm. works. So inductively, we have justified induction. Yeah, but uh, you can never have a like a 
usually with induction we say that we take these n statements to be true and then n plus one should be true yeah but yeah. In, in reality you don't you cannot set n <laughs> yeah yeah not there is all. no n there yeah, is yeah. no n you, you, but, you cannot like after uh, 1000 observations is it long enough to realize yeah, that yeah, yeah. one million one billion uh, there is no number of times it's still, yeah yeah the, the, it's insufficient it's insufficient uh, the ideas that the idea that uh, I don't know if the majority or but I think that is quite diffused is that uh, we have a psychological predisposition toward uh, induction mm -hmm. uh, because probably for uh, evolutionistic reasons uh, it was good for us to have a predisposition because mm -hmm. it works yes yes so even if it's not rationally theoretically justified mm -hmm. it works so, so we have this psych this psychological predisposition that uh, works so in the end uh, maybe the wisest thing is to just look at what works rather than believing this yeah, sort of statements this to the... be true and uh, even even in science i mean okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this is definitely the because we can't know what is true, and we have to deal with it. We we don't have. We can uh, we we can say that assuming piano principle two plus two equal four, mm -hmm. this is true. Nobody can say that it's not true. But is a system built. By... I mean, it can, for example, even 2 plus 2 equals 4, it can be said that it's not necessarily true. It, it can be, <laughs> no, no, as in, in base 3, it's not true. Ah, yeah. yeah. You oh, don't have yeah, four. This <laughs> is a, uh, yeah, as in, you know. Yeah, this is a little bit tricky. Uh, because then it would be 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, but there's a, dif a difference. Uh, for example, if I um, uh, we can imagine that there is a population mm -hmm. in which they speak English, the same English as the English spoken okay, no. well, in England, <laughs> yes, I don't yes. know, with only one difference, that two mean three. Uh, okay. This is, uh, we can, uh, uh, in, okay, maybe it's better don't <laughs> go inside this argument because there are future, um, because the real point it was with uh, a Kripke argument mm -hmm. about what is analytical and um, synthetic, synthetic. Uh -huh. synthetic. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, I, yeah, I understood yeah, so okay. that it's too complicated. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it's better. Uh, okay, so definitely we have uh, induction. Okay, it, it is a method that works. Like I said, um, we have a predisposition over time. It just, yeah, it's a useful tool. Yeah. But definitely yeah. don't, uh, yeah, we shouldn't jump to believing that something is true and it, it appears yeah it appears that even in science it's um, even though we have overzealous people that uh, think that uh, you know this statement needs to be true for example at this point in time all the physics community would say that um, for example energy is conserved right mm, yeah 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 it's it's something that we believe to be tr to be true like we we didn't find uh, but you know there are there are actually Cases where this argument it's not cannot take cannot be taken to be true. For example, um, I, I gave this example in in another podcast. Is that the universe is expanding and you have a co cosmological constant, and you need negative energy to be able yeah, to like yeah, yeah, push yeah. space away and so on. So, you know where is the energy come from, coming from? I mean, we, yeah, we do yeah, take yeah, the yeah. energy conservation at heart for a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cases. But when it comes to like these big cosmological arguments and so on. Now suddenly, you know, we, we just jump the fence and uh, yeah, we have yeah, no yeah. problem with it. So, um, but sometimes we do, we do still have overzealous people that take something, okay? For it, the one thing that everybody definitely agrees, it's causality. Mm. Like in, with scientific, uh, the scientific method, we, you know, we, you need some causes and this, this number of causes have this certain effect. Like yeah. this, and this is also fundamental, uh, we, will, we will talk uh, probably later. 
about you know the special relativity to gen- uh, sorry about Newtonian worldview yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. time and space and Kantian and so on to uh, to now special relativity and general relativity now causality is kind of fundamental it's not uh, you know so the, we have um, uh, some simultaneity and all the other properties yeah, yeah, that yeah. we would be associating with time before. Uh, but it seems like at this point we take causality to be true and I haven't, if there is one truth so far that I think uh, the scientific, the, all the scientific community, whether, whether you are a chemist, whether, whether you are a yeah, mathematician yeah, yeah. or a physicist, is like causes, causes and effects, like this is... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fundamental. It's more fundamental than, than time in a way. Or yeah, maybe philosophers uh, discuss also the concept of causality. Ah, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've never heard, like, you know, I've, I've read a little bit, very little, but so far yeah, all the yeah. conversation, all the podcasts, all the absolute, never I, I've actually heard the person. No, no, philosophers <laughs> ah, really? ah, can okay. do anything. <laughs> Even this. They can discuss oh, no it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually curious, maybe we can Yeah, jump, because jump uh, there are a lot of... Um, and I, I, I agree with a lot of the claims. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of philosophers and also that was also scientists, uh, mm-hmm. blah, blah, that thought that uh, what we say have to, um, have to have an empirical content. Oh, okay. uh, speak about uh, I don't know a b- this biscuit this is, okay. have an empirical content that mean if I if I go on this chair mm-hmm. and I look in that direction I will see um, a set of uh, visual experience mm-hmm. if I touch it I have a, a set of mm-hmm. uh, t- tactile experience. experiences and so there's a biscuit means this set of experience that I can have. Okay. Um, and the, um, the aim, the, I think the first aim of these people was avoid mysterious metaphysical, metaphysical concepts uh, that are very used in other uh, branch of philosophy. Mm-hmm. For okay. example, uh, there was a, something funny for me again mm-hmm. uh, that said Neurat Otto Neurat, I don't know the pronounced mm-hmm. that is, you can translate the Einstein general relativity in the language of Bantu that is a language of a tribe in Africa, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. but you can translate Hegel philosophy Hegel's philosophy in the language of Bantu this is this means something and uh, so, if we want to have, if we always want to have an empirical content, uh, what is the empirical content of causality? We just have correlation, constant correlation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We just have that um, the fact B always follow the fact uh, A in a certain set of conditions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there's nothing, nothing more. Um, so a lot of philosophers started to say, oh, we don't have to speak about causality, we mm-hmm. just have to speak at about 100% correlations. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also this is a little bit problematic yeah, because yeah. Um, uh, if, if these, two, these two things would be the same, uh, we, um, we should it mm, should be possible to mm, build um, I, an if and only if sentence, I don't remember okay, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if one is true, the other one should be true because are the, they have the same, same. meaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not the case. For example, if the event A and B are both caused by a third event C, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a 100% correlation, but there's no causality relation between A and B. So, so this is a little bit difficult, but mm-hmm. philosophers discuss about oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So course. for some causality, we don't have to speak about causality, even in science. 
others say no causality is important and uh, you don't have an alternative mm, mm. way of this uh, to this script describe describe mm -hmm. um, this yes kind of intuition yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on. but yeah, yeah the the point is this that from a pure empirical point of view a cause b is the same of a is 100 correlated to b mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, so they think we have just to speak about correlations uh, another another problem apart from the induction it's um what Karl Popper actually? Uh, what? Karl Popper. Ah, okay. Uh, pointed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, um, this refers to your uh, problem of demarcation. The demarcation problem, what is, yeah, exactly what is science and what yeah, is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Popper is, well, are you... Uh, yeah, yeah, the, just a few words about yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, his main, uh, his one of the big contributions that he had is uh, to view the progress of science through what is called falsificationism, as in a, a lens that you can uh, view science with. And it's basically saying that if you have a theory uh, that you can call in any sense scientific, you should be able to have a way to make a statement that you can then uh, apply some empirical observation to. Yeah. If, yeah, if yeah. that empirical statement it's um, you know fits with the empirical sorry if that statement fits with the empirical observation then it's okay, and also another big big component of this uh, theory making in uh, Karl Popper view is that you should have um, because we are talking about revolutions and so on every new theory that is built it should contain everything that older ones yeah, have yeah, yeah. and it should also be able to have something like a, a which is called a critical prediction yeah exactly. which is something that the other uh, set of statements did couldn't produce but this one can yeah and then it's something completely new and if you can verify and this is true then you have all the more reason to put some more trust into this new statement yeah. again i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, kind yeah. of using now the kun yeah, in a way yeah. of expressing that, you know, I'm kind of replacing yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Because in, in a way, I mean, we are, we are just having, you know, this, uh, let's say this table is the empirical observation and then I'm just, uh, you know, putting like a square on that, uh, yeah, on, the, on this yeah, table. Yeah. Like, you know, I put a square like this and, you know, it's different square size of squares. Yeah, 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 like yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, falsificationism with Karl Popper, but also it fails sometimes. So. Yeah, no, so it fails every time. <laughs> every time, oh yeah. no, yeah. We, are, we are screwed. <laughs> yeah, um, so the point of falsification, falsificationism mm -hmm. is that uh, um, what well, is a criteria for demarcation problem. So the point of falsification, uh, falsificationism mm -hmm. is a criteria to distinguish real scientific theory from fake scientific theory. Mm -hmm. Popper in particular thought about um, Marxism mm -hmm. and psychology. Uh, his aim uh, was to have a criteria mm -hmm. to state that psychology and Marxism are not, was not, uh, ah, were not of course, science. Of course. And if we uh, can give another example of uh, something like relating to the demarcation problem, it's also that uh, during the 40s and so on, uh, we had some ethnic cleansing based on uh, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. scientific yeah. evidence or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's important to be able yeah. to distinguish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, his point is, okay, if you have um, some crucial ex experiment or um, also just evidences that can falsify the theory, the theory is scientific real scientific because ah, okay so it's um, ju just to contrast because i think i haven't expressed myself very well before so it's uh, with with Karl popper you need to be able to define positively what what the observations are to give a uh, a set of um, causes for that i think that or? is not necessar necessary uh -huh. to define uh, well but it's important that you can um, even with an a priori mm -hmm. reason, okay. reasoning, 
that you can say, okay, it's possible that one day we will have uh, this kind of evidence, mm -hmm. a kind of evidence, maybe general, okay, but okay. it's important that it's possible to falsify. that you can have it mm -hmm. and that this evidence falsifies Falsifies, okay, perfect, perfect. Because, for example, if we, if my theory is, um, if you pray God, you will be fine, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, and uh, okay, I say, yeah, okay, so I pray and tomorrow I'm not fine, today I say I'm not fine. I go to the person who claims this theory and he say, tell me, oh, but uh, I don't know if in English there is a corrective of this. In, in Italian we say that the ways of God are uh, multiple and mysterious. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, okay. Same. So God works in mysterious ways. That's ah, okay. God uh, works in mysterious way, ways. Uh, so uh, could happen everything, mm -hmm. but the theory never could be falsified yes. because God uh, works in mysterious way. Yes, so yes. if I pray to become rich uh, and tomorrow I'm poor, uh, God uh, works in mysterious mm -hmm. way. If uh, I'm the <laughs> Uh, the person, uh, the tragedy person uh, who always happens something very, very bad. Mm -hmm. I born, my parents die, mm -hmm. my sister die, uh, people, <laughs> people, people bully who see me, yeah. Yeah, bully me every time. Oh, God works in mysterious way, blah, blah. But he loves you, he loves yeah, you. Yeah. Can we actually find uh, another, because... Indeed, this is a good example of falsificationism, but is there maybe a scientific, let's say, theory that yeah, was, uh, never... was placed in such a way that you cannot not actually... Uh, for example, I think that uh, homeo homeopathy, homeopathy. Uh, is a fake science mm -hmm. because, uh, mm -hmm. I, because you could take their medicines and you go to the person who sells mm -hmm. homeopathic medicines and say nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And you will find excuses. Uh, you will say, oh, you have to wait more time or no, something happened, but you don't realize it or okay, uh, let okay. us see. But there's no possibility that one day you think, oh, OK, these things doesn't happen. So the theory is false. Yes. This is the, in, a, in on the other hand, Popper thought that in physics you can do it. Mm -hmm. If you say, I have my law of gravity. My law of gravity implies that uh, Neptune uh, should have this trajectory. Mm -hmm. So we, we check the trajectory of Neptune mm -hmm. if it isn't what uh, the trajectory implied by the theory, we falsify the theory. Yes. Yeah. We can conclude that the theory is wrong. Uh, the problem is that this is not true. And in fact, um, the example of Neptune is excellent because up and what I just said, mm -hmm. uh, but scientists didn't say, oh, law of gravity mm -hmm. are wrong. Yeah. They yeah. said, oh, maybe there's another unknown planet which influences the trajectory. This is an unknown variable. Yes. It's called a known variable. And uh, so he saved the, they saved mm -hmm. the theory, even with um, an evidence against mm -hmm. the theory. And the problem is that you can always do it. You can always postulate unknown variables uh, because uh, you never have the theory. You have the theory plus auxiliary assumption mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on how, for example, the instruments work, yes, yeah. on other facts like the number of planets in solar system. You have a... Uh, and you can... Well, you falsify, uh, but not the theory. You falsify the theories plus 
all this assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we, you have an evidence against, you can decide. You can falsify, you can say, okay, the theory is false. Um, and this is what happened in, uh, in a revolu scientific revolution, as Kuhn pointed out. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can also say, no, the theory is correct. There should be an error in some other, like the number of the planet. Mm. And in that way, we discover um, Uranium, I guess. Oh. I guess it's Uranus. Uh, Uranus. Okay. Uranus. <laughs> because Uranium is, uh, is yes, the. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, because in Italian, have the same name. Ah, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, ah, no, they don't have the same okay. name. One is Urano and the other Uranio. Ah, okay. It's not very, very, very um, And mm -hmm. this happened a lot of times. For example, dark matter is something similar. Um, we observed the trajectory of galaxies. I don't know exactly. Uh, and there, there are some problems. So we, we uh, scientists mm -hmm. uh, pointed out that maybe there's an unknown variable, dark matter, mm -hmm. which influenced the trajectory of... And we started to search for dark, dark matter as in the past people started to search for uranium, mm -hmm. uranium, uranium mm -hmm. uh, in exactly in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called duhem quine problem. Quine, it was a philosopher. Duhem, I don't remember if it was... It was also a philosopher, mm -hmm. but I don't remember if it, he was also a mathematician or a physician, I don't remember. Uh, but this is the problem, mm -hmm. that you never have just the theory, you have the theory plus all the auxiliary, all the auxiliary assumptions. Yeah. So it's impossible to falsify. So if we accept the falsificationism as scientific uh, uh, demarcation criteria, mm -hmm. uh, simply the, the consequence is that we have no real scientific theory. Physics is not scientific because you can't falsify it, um, neuroscience, real science doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but, could be mm -hmm. a good heuristic but is influenced for, from, um, by um, pragmatical facts, concrete... Yeah, yeah. for example, uh, we, yeah, we can say that uh, the instruments didn't work right on that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. For another example, uh, I don't remember who um, contradicted uh, Bohr mm -hmm. with something related to hydrogen sequences, I don't, I don't know exactly because okay. I didn't study chemistry, okay. but uh, the, the story say that Bohr, uh, after reading what the, I think it was Evan or something like that, okay, okay. but I don't remember because with the name uh, I have oh. a problem <laughs> as I said, um, he said, no, 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 probably in his instrument, uh, uh, there were some uh, particles of uh, helium, I guess. Uh -huh, okay, okay. Pro maybe yes. it's not helium, but yeah, the yeah. point is, mm -hmm. your instrument, I'm sure, had a problem. And at the end, it was true yes. that the Evan uh, Evans experiment was uh, so in the in the instrument used by Evans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were these. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, parties and Bohr was right but the point is that uh, he could say no your evidence don't falsify my theory mm -hmm. probably your auxiliary assumption is wrong mm -hmm. and in particular that your instrument is working correctly mm -hmm. I can say no your is your recent but your instrument mm -hmm. that doesn't work correctly so would you say that, uh, I mean, even though, okay, generally you are right, there's always a lot of auxiliary assumptions, would we be able to test, you know, let's say our goal is to test this, 
um, this part of the theory. But now we have the auxiliary assumption. But is it possible that we can test all, you know, this is our goal. This is the, the central thing that we're trying to do yeah. to, to prove that this is uh, right or wrong. And we have the auxiliary assumption and then we test the auxiliary assumptions as well. I mean, after plenty of experiments, uh, do you think is it possible to... I don't of, know. I think that it, probably like you need an infinite, infinite amount of experience, of experience so concretely. Yeah, it's not possible. But there are another problem that maybe could be ignored. I don't know. But if we want to be rigorous, is true. That it, Duhem pointed out that this, but the problem is Duhem is called Duhem Quine problem. Mm -hmm. Quine add to this the fact that also the mathematics behind and the logic behind are parts of the auxiliary assumption. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can say no, it's wrong our logic. And maybe this happens in quantum theory happened as you say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is maybe too extreme okay i okay. think that no one say no our logic is wrong but um, from a theoretical point of view you can say it so you can do the also an infinite amount of theory mm -hmm. but you can't test your logic Yes, yes, because in this, yeah, in this, way. this is the problem of uh, the same problem as before. Because to test your logic, for example, mm -hmm. you have to uh, accept a statement who say, if e, for example, mm -hmm. then um, our logic is wrong. Mm -hmm. But this is a deduction, and this deduction use our logic. <laughs> so we can't falsify yeah, our yeah, logic yeah. using our logic. Okay, okay, so yeah. this is impossible, and uh, if we want to be really, really rigorous, it's impossible to falsify anything. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, if we ignore this problem of logic saying, uh, okay, okay, yeah, but yeah. we can agree that very, very likely yes, 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 our yes. logic is fine, yes, yes, yes. no problem, maybe, but I think that you need an infinite amount of experiment to, to test, to test theory, every yeah. auxiliary assumption yes, 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 separately yes. from the theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, in the end, um, yeah, <laughs> we see that whenever we try to fully, fully airtight, uh, you know, very precisely say yeah. something that this is true, we always run into problems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, I'm not talking about, you know, is something like what is truth then, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is a problem within itself. So we, uh, we um, went into the problem of uh, inductionism, that uh, you, you cannot take it, um, again, it's not airtight. It has its own problems now for falsificationism, even though, you know, you can make a theory and you have an experiment that would falsify the theory, then you cannot replace only that statement. You need to look into all the other very, very, very many auxiliary assumptions is that the experiment uh, is like the, are the instruments working well within parameters? Is the temperature yeah, okay? And, yeah, you know, yeah. we can go on and on and on with listing a lot of yeah. auxiliary assumptions that we, we've made. Uh, and then we've also mentioned um, this name, Kuhn, mm -hmm. and uh, how he thinks of uh, the progress of science. So he, uh, the biggest uh, contribution that he made is that he said that we are not accumulating uh, new, new ideas over time, but replacing yeah. uh, old ones with uh, new paradigms. And uh, yeah. apparently in the book that we both read, uh, he said that he is single-handedly single responsible for introducing the word paradigm yeah. <laughs> in usage, which is something funny, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like a poet of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> he uses one word and now uh, one word and now everybody is using it. So, so indeed, um, Kuhn thinks of it this way. So we have uh, an example of a paradigm shift um, from Aristotelian, we go to Galileo and uh, as in Okay, Earth is central. Okay, no, no, Earth is not central. Now the Sun is central. Yeah. Of course, uh, you, we go even deeper. No, the Sun is not central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even the center of the galaxy. It's all you know, just a bunch yeah, of yeah, objects yeah, yeah. orbiting around each other. So this is one paradigm shift uh, going from Earth is being the center to the 
you know, uh, is going around the sun. Another one would be um, the view to time and space that we had from uh, from Newton, uh, who, I mean, he didn't even believe it to be true that, you know, we have absolute time and space uh, and so yeah, on. Yeah. Even he <laughs> didn't believe it to be true. But, uh, you know, then again, if we apply um, the, um, the criterion, does it help us explain adequately empirical evidence or, or simply does it work yeah. if we think about it this way then you know uh, looking um, for uh, looking at something and explaining it through absolute time and space you know it works in a lot of lot a lot a lot of uh, you know scenarios so you know it, it holds yeah. water yeah, it yeah, holds yeah, water yeah. basically but then again, you know, when we go into other um, other areas, we see that you know absolute time and space don't no longer work. Then we have the paradigm shift to uh, special relativity, and time and space are uh, correlated, and, and so on. You cannot have one without the other, and you know now you have mass; so, uh, they are not independent anymore. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And anyways, even if you don't have mass, uh, even in Minkowski space, if you have relative motion of one thing to another, then uh, I mean, uh, then you you know you 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 already have time and space like changing from one observer to the other. Um, now we cannot we cannot think of yeah one thing maybe with time and space because I said about mass is that we kind of observers we think of them as being massive so we kind of have to introduce mass for us to be because okay. you, you cannot be a, a light uh, like mass of zero observer we don't yeah, we, we don't yeah, yeah. explain anything. As a, ah, take this observer that travels with the speed of light, like with. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Usually, yeah. I mean, usually, always within general relativity, all observers are have some sort of mass. You can't take their frame of reference if you're a particle of light in GR, just to be precise, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. people don't care about this, but I care <laughs> <laughs> because I've, I've thought a lot about this. So, anyways, um, so another paradigm shift is time and space from uh, Newton to, to Einstein. Can you point to other, maybe, in a Maybe more particular um, ones. Or... Shift of paradigm, general like this, I don't know. Yeah, because but these are of course also in... quantum theory ah, of course, was yes. a, yeah, yeah. a very big one. Yeah, yeah, big one uh, change of paradigm, mm -hmm. paradigm. Um, yeah, I think. It's I great. think in in chemistry, I, I don't remember exactly, but. At the time, they believed in a caloric or ah, caloric the, theory, yes, yeah, caloric a transport theory. of heat, and then yeah. apparently it's not a fluid; it's just a, yeah, you know, yeah, a motion yeah. of atoms and so yeah. on. I don't know yeah. if this is exactly a paradigm. Yeah, probably. I have to more, yeah. recheck my history of science textbook, <laughs> but uh, no, but I think it's a good example, yes, yeah. because caloric theory can be used uh, in. Uh, in, def in some definite cases to explain how heat is transferred uh, from one object to the other yeah, and so on, yeah, but yeah. in the end it's just motion of atoms, chaotic motion yeah, that exactly. is actually transferred, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, literally flows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, flows through objects. So, um, uh, so yeah, we, we have a few examples of, of uh, this, yeah, so we have atoms instead of just some fluid yeah like yeah. that uh, then time and space and uh, you know then we would be living like ether because if you go to maxwell he believed that uh, you know light has to, needs a medium ah, to travel yeah, so yeah, yeah, this yeah. is another paradigm yeah, yeah yeah like now you have ether but then ether doesn't exist so <laughs> you know we we do have uh, all this all this um, sort of progress made made in this way so you need to replace what you believed before and uh, with something new, like uh, yeah. a new set. But is this um, is this airtight? Can we can we literally say that we haven't like we are not accumulating? I think you pointed out before that whenever we introduce something new, it has to be more general. And yeah. I think this is also a Karl Popper argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that, for example, in the um, during with the change from. Uh, Newton physics to Einstein physics, um, we can say that, I think, we can say that we actually accumulated new knowledge because mm -hmm. all the Newtonian uh, predictions could be made with Einstein theory. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but with Einstein theory, you have something new. For example, you can explain the trajectory of Mercurius. <laughs> Mercurius. Mercury. Uh, Mercury. <laughs> Mercurius. <laughs> that Italian, is the, Italian name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you can't explain. Is a question of I don't know exactly, but zero point zero 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 three de degree yeah, angle the, degree. Yeah, yeah, small, the difference, small, yeah. but is. In any case, it's a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so with Einstein, uh, gen uh, general relativity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in nowadays some other problem, but okay. With general relativity, you can, you, you have accumulated new knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You can predict more, everything that the precedent theory mm -hmm. predicts plus something new. Uh, in other case, uh, maybe is not. Ah. The point is also that it, this depends on the, um, the the time that we are considering mm -hmm. because uh, maybe when during the passage uh, passage is an English word of passage of uh, no it is a word ah, okay a passage from one theory to another. Um, it's possible yeah, to path, say. Yeah, passage. Um, okay. Transition. transition. Ah, yeah, yeah, transition. Okay. Um, from uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember the uh, concrete example, but I, what I can say is that from a theoretical point of view, both scenarios are possible. Mm -hmm. That we lose some knowledge at first when we change parad paradigm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's also possible, like uh, relativity, bizarre, yeah. that we simply replace some principle, mm -hmm. but we maintain all our knowledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but from a theoretical point of view, it's possible to, for example, the Ptolemaic uh, system mm -hmm. uh, with cycle, epicycle, epi yes. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. um, predicted. A, a lot, all what they can observe was correctly predicted by the Ptolemaic mm -hmm. theory. Um, when they change at, at first, maybe the new theory for... Um, so they say, okay, Earth is not the center of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, maybe they... It's logically possible. It's, I don't know if it was actually happened mm -hmm. in the history. Yes. But it's possible that uh, with, the, with the new theory, they can't explain a lot of things because Ptolemaic theory was developed in hundred and hundred of uh, years of observations. Mm -hmm. When something wrong, they had the uh, new cycle, new epicycle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if epicycle is correct. No, epicycle. Yeah. Oh, okay, epicycle. So you, you don't have all of this. You have just um, a sort of law of gravity, for example, uh, in the years from Galileo mm -hmm. up to uh, Copernicus, mm -hmm. Bra, okay. all mm -hmm. of this. They don't have the laws of yeah, gravity, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, because mm -hmm. Newton... Uh, but they have something. Mm -hmm. And it's logically possible that that something uh, that is not so precise as the Newton law that came later mm -hmm. wasn't impossible to predict the motion of that star yes, yes. that Ptolemaic system predict mm -hmm. because it was adapted uh, observation after observation. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so relating to Kuhn, I think one other thing that uh, I read in the book and uh, it surprised me is that this uh, literal replacement uh, makes it such that we, um, we no longer, let's say, take, uh, for example, let's say we have um, an experiment relating to to neutrons, right? And we take these neutrons to have uh, some properties in themselves. And then we make some observations. And then later on, it, uh, it actually appears that neutrons don't have exactly all these properties that uh, we assumed before, and they have slightly different properties. Is it such that 
So in this scenario, let's say it worked, our experiment worked, but you know, in a sense, we didn't pinpoint the true nature of things. It's just, we, in a sense, we created the neutron when we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, it yeah. in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find it fascinating that taking Kuhn's um, idea of a paradigm shift, we don't need to believe in uh, that the nature of things is in a certain way. Uh, yeah. As you, know, you can never know the, 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 the true nature of that thing. It's, yeah. it's literally, you just place some properties in a, in a system of ideas and this yeah, is the so outcome. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, this is it related is to um, either under the tem under determination of theories mm -hmm. and the problems of uh, unobservable entities. Yes, yeah, that is what you said. For example, but even no, uh, an atoms maybe nowadays could be observed, but uh, yeah, yeah, in a uh, sense, it, because uh, also you know, like we when we observe something like it has to be colorful and, and so yeah. on, we cannot observe. Color yeah. because color is just the electron passing from one ah, okay. state to yeah, the other. Yeah, so yeah. if you look at an atom, it's not like uh, yeah. The problem when we observe you, know, you don't this... see you don't see uh, the something that is smaller than a brick. You know you, you yeah yeah you, yeah you, yeah. In that sense. yeah the... But you can observe like one. You can mm. contain it and uh, you know okay. you, you can infer the presence of only one atom. Yeah, this is the point a, a, that you space. infer the presence. Uh, you, you infer the presence, you yes. don't see, it's like there's another funny story mm -hmm. um, of um, a man who was walking in a safari, in, who, who, he was ma making a safari in yes. Africa mm -hmm. with a guide, Yes, yeah. the guide um, point the sky with the finger mm -hmm. and uh, say, oh there's a lion, and the man, <laughs> What? What are you saying? Sorry. Oh, there's a lion because do you see this bird that fly around uh, in that point mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm. sky? Mm -hmm. They are waiting to eat uh, the ca carcass. Yeah, the carcass. The carcass of an animal, and they can do it now because there's a lion. So. He inferred the presence of a lion looking at birds. Yes. He, mm -hmm. he didn't look the lion. He yeah, inferred he the presence yeah. of the lion. Right. And this reasoning is very logical, linear, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. intuitively okay. But again, if you want to be really, really rigorous, you don't say. Yeah, you, yeah, don't, you don't know. See. You don't, you don't see know the lion. Yeah. if. Uh, yeah, you don't see the lion. You are inferring, but your inference is made with assumption yeah, on right. the behavior right. of the birds. And if we talk about a neutron or uh, something more, uh, even more little, fundamental, uh, yeah. fundamental like quark, I don't <laughs> know, uh, this could be a little problem. Mm -hmm. There's some person who say, oh, we are realist, realist uh, referring to unobservable entities. There mm -hmm. are the person, uh, as before, who want an empirical content, mm -hmm. who say, no, electron is just a mathematical construction. We just have what we see, what we see with our scientific mm -hmm. instrument. And, uh, yeah, because in the end, I mean, the thing that you see is, you know, it's some numbers uh, on a yeah, screen. Or it's yeah, a exactly. The point is, it's a yeah, yeah. you see numbers on a screen and from these numbers you infer, okay, but this is related to the paradigm, the paradigm that you are accepting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With another paradig paradigm, the same but, number mm -hmm. could mean something totally different. Mm -hmm. Could mean that uh, the Ethereum... Uh, I don't know what is the ether. The, the ether. Yeah. Ether. Okay. Oh, I have some degree of uh, I don't know fluidity. Uh, refractivity. <laughs> refractivity. Yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. And so, yeah, I, I don't remember ah, the to, question. Yeah. Yeah. To, to to make uh, no, but the, um, I think you you pointed exactly what I was going uh, to say next. Uh, which is the realism in science, you know, mm. should we take um, all these, uh, let's say, fundamental statements of our theory to be exactly true, as in the electron, is it really yeah. exactly exactly that? And the one thing that I definitely need to mention now that we specified the undetermination, yeah. 
problem because uh, it's definitely a very good point to consider when we are thinking about you know evolution of our understanding of science and you know accumulation of knowledge is that uh, this is a point made by Poincaré which lived uh, like at the beginning of uh, the 20th century so yeah a <laughs> hundred yeah. years ago and he made uh, he made the point then is that uh, for example if we have uh, the general theory of relativity we don't necessarily need to take uh, now you know time and space are interconnected and uh, yeah. have all these uh, fundamental. You can speak about forces. Exactly. Yeah, we we can just add new forces to absolute time and space. Exactly. Uh, the forces about you know the geometry of your setup and so on, and it is actually mathematically possible to replicate the same set of results, albeit it's yeah. a lot more complicated. And then again, you know we. <laughs> You know, we have our heuristics of science, you know, if it's simpler, then you should trust it because it's, you know, easier to express, uh, exp uh, you know, express results uh, in this new language uh, with these new symbols and with this new, you know, way of writing it and so on. But um, the truth of the matter is that uh, Poincaré is right. I mean, you can always yeah. use a different theory and, you know, add some new auxiliary assumption and make the same set exactly. of... It may seem ad hoc, and it is ad hoc, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it's possible. Yeah. yeah so exactly. should should we should we really believe that you know if this theory is simpler, like should we believe that yeah this is true now? Time and space are indeed interco inter interconnected, and uh, you know at some point it works, and we should be happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Like, like we, we should be happy with this, but determination is really something. That yeah, this is a, uh, this is a per yeah, what is perfect reality? example of yeah. underdetermination. We talk about underdetermination when we have two different theories that makes exactly the same prediction. This is an example of... Um, but there are two types of underdetermination. Uh, but I don't know okay. the name, but the first type is this, the second type is the strong type, mm -hmm. uh, because here we have, um, there are some, a, a set of mm -hmm. observations that are the same, but maybe these two theories could different in front of a totally new type of evidences, if we have a new instrument, uh, that uh, can look the geometry of the universe of I, this is not mm, I think that is impossible mm. but logically let's let's say, for yeah. example we have also strong the uh, under determination for example the brain in a vat mm -hmm. that is uh, the example made by Putnam the, uh, and Descartes, made fam uh, famous by the Matrix. Ah, oh, but Descartes is uh, like literally yeah, Descartes is yeah, yeah, Descartes is the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, Descartes the yeah, yeah, the first <laughs> version, yeah. But he, he don't uh, he didn't speak about brain yeah, in a yeah. vat. Mm -hmm. The I think the brain in a vat because uh, how can I say that uh, I have an end? Um, I'm not a brain in a vat on Alpha Centa Centauri <laughs> that with the electrode placed in all my brain areas that produce the, um, yeah, the, feeling of the perception of mm -hmm. the feeling, the perception mm -hmm. to have. In this case, we have two different theories that a priori have all the possible evidences, for which all the possible evidences are a priori the same. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, for science is a problem because, okay, we have a theory that's work, the, that works, but there are probably an infinite amount of theories that works the same. So why we should believe in one of them? The probability is one over infinite, infinite that mm -hmm. is uh, ten, ten, that tends to zero. So, and the example is, we can have a graph example. Uh, the evidences are a set of point Mm -hmm. uh, a finite set of point theories are curves and we know that uh, through a finite set of point pass an infinite, infinite amount of curves yeah. this is the graph example mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the graphic ex example yeah, of yeah, this yeah. and um, 
for that reason, uh, many scientists started to talk at, uh, to talk about uh, extra empirical uh, reason mm -hmm. when we judge a theory, because two th two theories can have the same consequences, but maybe one is more elegant, mm -hmm. more simple, um, postulate uh, fewer um, entities, yes, unobservable yes. entities, mm -hmm. and. A lot of scientists agree that uh, there are reasonable reasons, mm -hmm. uh, reasons um, but they are extra empirical. So uh, one person say why the truth of a theory should depend on his elegance. What, what, is, yeah, what yeah, does is elegance a, mean and is what is the connection yeah, exactly. with truth? Um, this is Mm, pragmatic. Uh, yeah, at, the, at the start of this conversation, we talk um, about uh, why scientific community sometimes makes mm -hmm. something, sometimes makes some, and this is not random, but uh, from a theoretical point of view, is random because person from pragmatic yeah, you have some uh, feeling about uh, yeah sometimes uh, you, you have some feeling or sometimes you are more focused on a ta on a class of problems and for that class of problem you you, you think in a little different way mm -hmm. this uh, in, in any case under determination is this and uh, yeah, this is the problem and the solution, but like always, also the solution that are the extra empirical reason could be discussed. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, you, we've been mentioning this uh, unobservable entity, like you say, it's extra empirical. Sometimes we, you know, we can introduce these new additional forces that, uh, you know, make up for the empirical result, but you cannot observe them, but still they, uh, they replicate everything that we see. So indeed we have, um, for example, the electron in itself, like we've been saying so far, it's uh, unobservable in a, in a very, um, let's say, visceral sense. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. cannot see it, we cannot feel one electron, we usually infer, infer the presence of it. So is it actually necessary for us to believe that electrons are true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a sense, uh, you know, it's, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't require belief. And this is... Um, uh, this is actually the point that Van Frassen mm. that Van Frassen made, and maybe I can uh, even quote uh, a part of the book that says about this is that acceptance of the best theories of science should not require belief in the entities postulated by them. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's enough for us to be able to use these constructs that we've made and then to explain empirical uh, empirical evidence, but uh, we don't need to believe that something yeah, is something yeah, yeah, yeah. is true. The, because given the fact that we can't reach the truth, mm -hmm. he said, uh, and this is called um, uh, constructive like, empiricism. Yes, exactly, uh, yeah, okay. constructive empiricism. Um, he said, okay, so we we can see, we can, we don't have any conceivable way to know the truth, mm -hmm. the absolute yes, truth. Yes. So what we can do? We can base our decisions, uh, whatever, uh, on how the theory works. So the important thing is if the theory works. No, if it's true, maybe it's totally false. Yes, yes. Mm, In some electrons sense. Yeah. don't exist. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. In the uh, way that we think about them as a point. Yeah. Actually. Maybe it's yeah, just yeah. like a twisty, twisty yeah, little yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe it's. Um, Total different, maybe a, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a cross in the yeah. sixth dimension. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, no. um, but Van Frassen say I'm not interested. Uh, my interest is that if the theories say that tomorrow, I don't know, um, well, sunrise mm -hmm. uh, will be tomorrow. I will see the sunrise. Uh, and this is a stupid example, mm -hmm. but in general, uh, that a theory works mean that we can go on the moon, that we can build houses, yes. palace, mm -hmm. that we can uh, we can do 
what we do, all of what we do. Yes, yes. So it's maybe a question of um, another, maybe another quote from, from Val Prasen is that um, we shouldn't take science, uh, as in science is not built uh, as a literally true story of what there is, yeah. as in this is the electron, but it's just, it's built so that we have an adequate way of expressing what we observe. Mm, okay, yeah. So we don't need to make the jump into, you know, believing, like making science yeah. this uh, this sort of religion. Because yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, many yeah. people literally take it as a religion, like yeah. scientists say this, so it's true, so yeah, some, yeah, yeah, somehow yeah. that gives them peace. If scientists yeah, yeah, say yeah. this, it's true, but in the end we have problems with this too, even in science you cannot say that something is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a relation to this, I want to say something that yeah, I yeah. think is more important. It's not totally related, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, of course it's but I, I don't want to forego this because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people now in Italy, I don't know if it's a, in general, now mm -hmm. it, they started to talk about scientism. That is exactly when you put faith like dogma, oh, science say this, so this is true. Mm -hmm. And they say, ah, oh, it's not like that. But they use this argument to to claim that they're totally crazy theories about uh, unobservable um, crazy theories. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, for example, ah, oh, COVID doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. If you say that exists because scientists say that exists, you are a scientist. Scientist. Um, scientist. Um, no, scientism is. Scientism is. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and yeah. literally, <laughs> yeah. this is true because um, put faith is is doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is yeah. that science don't tell us what is the um, what is the truth, mm -hmm. but could tell us what is the most rational things. Uh, things to things mm -hmm. to, think to think is the truth, mm -hmm. and this is very important because okay, it's possible that COVID doesn't exist because it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, is it not because uh, science say scientists say that exist exists, mm -hmm. but is the the most rational thing to think is that it exists. Yes, yes. And the point is that because we never have certainty, like I said mm -hmm. before, but this doesn't mean that everything, every statement is the same. Yeah, there well, are yeah, exactly. statements most, uh, that are more rational to believe mm -hmm. and others that are mm, few, uh, less rational to believe. Yes, yes, yes. And others that are totally crazy. Yes. Uh, so the... Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great example, it. yeah, about the, the COVID, exactly, the COVID debate. I mean, we do have, uh, ju ju just to add a little bit of, uh, let's see, more intrigue to this statement. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, we, we have, you know, the statement about its existence and uh, then statements about uh, how it affects people. And then, you know, we have, on the other hand, the statements about the vaccine and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, indeed, I mean, many of the statements that we make about the vaccines, uh, you know, they are taken to be scientific, so you should believe in them and so on. But, you know, the truth of the matter is that, you know, there is a little limited number of uh, experiments that's been done. The control groups have, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. have not been cleaned. And also, uh, with with statistics, you can lie so easily. So yeah, 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 And yeah. if you do it for a political reason, all the more you can express yourself yeah, in a yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of manner that makes your experiment work and so on. So we should never, you know, the same with the cancer, uh, uh, the, the cancer debate. You know, there were um, uh, medical papers uh, that were done not by companies related to, to tobacco that, you know, were doing experiments on tobacco and they were saying that these are... Uh, it's actually um, harmful to people and you know then the companies uh, that own the tobacco industry and so on uh, then <laughs> you yeah, know, make their yeah, own yeah. experiments and they say that it's not so you know we should not take uh, yeah the scientific whatever comes out of the scientific community it's true and also we have this very big problem that we didn't mention the problem of reproducibility yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now, actually, I don't have that statistic on me, but uh, I have it saved somewhere. It's like, if you ask, um, 
I think to, to make it to, I'm not very far, it's okay, it's not a true, true number, but uh, it's very close. If you ask even the physicist to reproduce their own experiments, this is coming to experiments, not theory, so it's a problem of science of the scientific community, but it's a little bit different from what we discussed so far, is that if you ask 50% of the physicists to reproduce their results, they will not be able to. Okay. Even physicists. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. when we go to... Uh, psychology or yeah, whatever, yeah, it's yeah, even yeah. worse, but like even physics that we yeah, take uh, yeah. so much at heart that ah, this result came out, yeah. the, even that cannot be reproduced, so we have a big, big problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I will definitely link that article that uh, everybody should read it in my opinion. Yeah, 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 everybody yeah. should. It's actually a nature article, so I mean, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. very reputable. No, no, but this is uh, known uh, and there are, in this, there are a lot of problems. One is this, reproducibility. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is uh, the, the fact that we stat you can play a little bit with statistics, statistics too. Yeah, to make your point. I don't remember exactly how it was called. The, uh, it wasn't the p-value. I don't no, know. There's, the oh, yeah, but it wasn't alpha, the p-value. I don't remember. There, there was some indicator yeah, like yeah. this that mm -hmm. you can use uh, the plus significance si value sign maybe. or no or oh. the I don't remember. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. And the minus one is mm -hmm. for a statistic reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of time scientists choose uh, what type to use if the only plus or plus minus. Mm -hmm. uh, after the experiment because they say oh with plus my experiment is my theory is not mm -hmm. confirmed yeah, yeah, yeah. with the other is okay so i choose later and there are other yeah, possible yeah, you can um, increase the polynomial degree of mm -hmm. something you can do uh, yeah, yeah a lot of things too yeah that, that, that's very true and also um, uh, i remember this example from the biomedical um, community that I think for them it's a really big problem because you have all this data gathered from people and you know people are not perfect systems and so on yeah. and, and then again when you're doing averaging over ensembles and so on sometimes you are just using methods that are not necessarily uh, well justified in that, yeah. in that moment yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, you're doing it just so that your paper you know has <laughs> better you know yeah, better yeah, outcome yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on so it's uh, and this is also okay it's a sociological problem because we push people to uh, to produce more so you know if you produce papers then you've done your job but it's also a fundamental problem that even yeah, though we yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. be pushed we still would have trouble with reproducing our yeah, results yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is this open to kind of uh, question i think yeah. one is how we can um, make the situation better mm -hmm. how can we can how can we resolve the maybe not resolve but reduce yes the problem yeah, yeah. always reduce, always reduce. Um, the other is okay this problem what tell us this problem that we can't trust science. Uh, what we, what mm -hmm. can we infer from yeah, yeah, this? Yeah. Uh, the first question: For something, there are some um, ideas. Uh, for example, uh, I, I don't know for reproducibility. Some if some people have ideas mm -hmm, on how mm -hmm. to reduce them. But for example, for um, the, the playing with statistics, mm -hmm. uh, some people think that um, scientists scientists mm -hmm. should um, public a kind of pre-paper yeah. in which they say, okay, I want to prove that, I'm going to use this method, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to interpret the results in that way. Yeah, yeah. And later make all the experiment mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. eventually publish the paper. This could an idea. I don't probably people who want to defeat uh, will find a way, but could be useful. I don't know. Uh, the other question 
what this problem says uh, say to us. Um, of course, this reduced the degree of uh, no faith, um, fiducia, uh, trust. Tru yeah, trust mm -hmm. that we can that can have on science. Um, but we have to also say that okay, there's the problem, but there's also the um, willingness of the community to control. Uh, there's also for egoistic human reason because if the scientist uh, a publish a paper, mm -hmm. uh, a scientist for two sub two argument for a theory, the scientist B who not agree with this theory will try to find any possible problems as mm -hmm. this paper. Has. So we can think that. Um, the complex, in any case, uh, worth some degree of trust mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, the, some degree that is not towards zero, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe uh, greater. Mm -hmm. and, and this, but if is true, science have many problems and. Uh, Almost everything say something wrong. The ones who say, ah, science is science. You mm -hmm. can't say that it's wrong because science says that it's mm -hmm. true. And the other is equally wrong from yeah, my point crazy, of view, who say, uh, ah, but science has problems, so I can believe whatever yeah, I yeah, want yeah, to exactly. be. No, it's not. <laughs> like yeah, I it think exactly. that is... Um, <laughs> important and yeah and I, I would say that also it's not necessarily a fine line that you need to cross. Yeah, 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 yeah there definitely is a lot of stuff that we can take okay this works this works so you know you we can trust yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. trust a lot of uh, decisions that are based on a lot of work yeah uh, because we that... don't really need to believe that it's either your you know a scientist or your you can believe anything no yeah no, there is plenty of space in between yeah but i think that we also have some kind of probabilistic reasoning. That, for example, okay, science have a lot of problem, but if we say if we put the number of uh, not maybe papers uh, is not the uh, how can I say uh, but in general, mm -hmm. if we look at how many scientific theories or claims mm -hmm. um, work, we can have a probabilis probabilistic estim estimate yeah, yeah. of, of uh, for, for the other one. Yeah, and for example, yeah. if 90%, this is a random mm -hmm. number, but yeah. for example, if 90% of uh, the papers with some specific uh, characteristic like um, quoted by more than taught mm -hmm. uh, papers that confirm mm -hmm. uh, blah blah uh, accepted in general uh, put in the um, textbooks of uh, mm -hmm. blah, we can say something uh, if the 90% of that kind of papers works mm -hmm. uh, we can say okay I have the 90% probability that if a paper respects these characteristics, is true. So yeah. I can believe it at 90% degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the point is that it is not 0, 1. Yeah, there yeah, are yeah, degree course. between 0 and 1, and there, are, there is statistics, uh, mm -hmm. probability. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Um, no, this has been a really fruitful, <laughs> <a> fruitful <laughs> conversation on the problems on, uh, of uh, science in general. But I remember the first time we actually talked, we uh, you had uh, some interesting <laughs> input on uh, on general relativity. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can uh, use that as a study case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your your ideas about general relativity. No, I have I have problems with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But actually, mm -hmm. I have problems even with uh, re restricted relativity. Ah, special, special. Relativity. No, not a special one. The general one. 
No, it's special uh, relativity and general relativity. Ah, okay, because in I think that in Italian, in Italian it's, it's diff- like little relativity, I think, no? Yeah, in Italian we have restricted ah, relativity okay. and general special, relativity. Special, special uh, And general. I thought that special it was uh, ah, okay, synonymous no, no, no. of general. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I have to continue to study mathematics for, um, for some months mm-hmm. yet. Well, may- maybe years. No, pro- <laughs> probably years. <laughs> pro- maybe decades. No, no, but you, you've, you've done so. You've done definitely. You looked into tensorial uh, mathematics. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. So but, this is already, you know, this no, is already stuff that my, is impactful. What, what I want to do is a formal proof that mm-hmm. relativity <laughs> <Yeah>. is wrong. <laughs> but for this, uh, probably I have to wait for a little bit. Yeah, for, for a little bit, yes. Um, so, yeah, can, can you explain? But uh, my, yeah. Intuitively, my problem with relativity is that uh, for the Lorentz transformations, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we can't uh, analyze uh, as. Um, reference system how it's uh, called yeah yeah okay a reference system that goes at speed of light a reference frame usually it's ah, a reference expression. frame okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah your problem is that, that you cannot have an observer of, at the speed of light uh no that we can that because we have our affine space mm-hmm. and a reference frame is just a Point, uh, we have our affine space with, um, I don't remember the, the name, but... A connection. Uh, when we, the thing that made possible to say, to compute the distance connection. between... Ah, connection. Okay, the connection. Because the textbook I read uh, used uh, another word mm-hmm. that I, mm-hmm. now I don't remember. The pa- parallel displacement. Uh, yeah, it's related to... Uh, okay. It's, it's a concept that... Uh, okay. And, uh, and the problem is that you can, can't mm-hmm. have a reference frame put on... A, um, that goes on at the speed of light. Yes, yeah. And for me, for, from a theoretical... Ma- mathematically, it's like this, because mm-hmm. you have uh, Lorentz transformation that have the speed of light... At, yeah, uh, at the bottom, it's yeah. uh, wh- it's always a gamma gamma factor inside of yeah. the Lorentz transformation. So just plainly, you have a gamma factor, which is 1 over 1 minus uh, yeah. your relative speed over C. Yeah. So, so if you it's 1 minus C over C, 1 minus 1 is 0, you divide by 0. Exactly. What, what, and the function is undefined, yeah. so you can't do it mathematically. But theoretically, I, for me, it's a problem because um, the, the general principle is that we can, that uh, laws of physics are invariant. Mm-hmm. Um, in every yeah, reference. in every frame they look in the every same. frame that yeah. they look they are the same. covariant. It's called ah covariant. Okay, yes. they look uh, the same in every frame, meaning that you don't necessarily have have the same values for length, uh, time, yeah, displacement, yeah, yeah, and so on. But uh, they, they look the same. It's the isom- same equation. Isomorphism, isomorphism. Um, just covariant. I think covariant mm, is the okay, best way. Okay, the okay, best okay. way. Uh, best. And um, but so. Uh, but from a general point of view, from I don't find any theoretical reason that that no, don't doesn't no don't refer to um, because in a certain way Lorentz transformation could be some um, a contingency. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a formula yeah, yeah. that we use and work. Yeah. Works for a variety. W- works. Works. It works. <laughs> <He> just works. <laughs> Let's see. Works. So. Yeah. But it's just a formula. I don't find the theoretical principle that's explained me why I can't describe a system from the light point of view. So, yeah. The... And the problem is if that if I could do it, this would create uh, paradoxes. Uh, or, uh, paradoxes. Uh, for example, I don't know if there are uh, two points that go that uh, which go at different speed. Mm-hmm. 
at point zero, we can suppose that they are in the same place, mm -hmm. uh, not exactly in the same place, but at time uh, five, one is uh, at uh, five meters and the mm -hmm. other is, uh, and the other is mm -hmm. in uh, 10 meters, yeah, for yeah. example. Uh, if we describe this system from the light point of view, both points are not moving. Uh, not moving. Yeah, yeah. So at time five, we have that they are in the same position. And, uh, and with another yeah, the, the reference that, frame, yeah. the position is changed. The thing is that... Um... Within general relativity, I mean, we specify that, you know, light postulate, actually, this is one of the postulates, massive things uh, travel along time like uh, time like paths, meaning uh, they travel, uh, you know, with uh, through space, they always travel less than the speed of light. And uh, the speed of light travels, of course, with the speed of light, meaning that the the time because this is actually the the way that we define this mathematically it's if you would put a time uh, like a clock mm, okay uh, on an object and you know it would trace this path then it would beat a certain number of of times yeah okay but uh, if you would put a clock on a on a photon it wouldn't beat at all it, yeah it literally yeah, yeah. Doesn't... okay time is every yes is it's not Zero, it yeah, yeah. doesn't move also the yeah, time. It, yeah, so. yeah. So the particle of light moves across space and doesn't move at yeah, all across yeah. the time okay, direction. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. literally we cannot, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, at some point I was, uh, I'm, I'm very interested into this question, very related to this, is uh, can you actually make the transition from, um, because this is Minkowski space. Mm, so, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's, you know, um, I also have some, some uh, uh, thoughts on this. Is that in Minkowski, you know, Minkowski space is definitely different from, you know, Newtonian, our uh, Newtonian intuition. And we use Newtonian intuition also a lot of times to explain uh, things that are happening within general relativity. But the thing is that at some point, even though it does not make sense, like, you know, inside your brain, it, it feels like two things are going against one another when you're thinking about time and uh, yeah, you know, all yeah, these yeah, events yeah. in GR. It is because we are used to living in a world where using approximations like the Euclidean approximation to time and space works, but we literally cannot, cannot replace the same intuition yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. within Minkowski. When we think in Minkowski, it's different. And I was thinking very much, can we actually map Minkowski space to Euclidean space so that we kind of can make a representation, you know, within yeah, this yeah, space yeah, and see yeah. if this is a length or how does it move and so on. And the answer is that you cannot. You, you ah, literally, okay. these are two different spaces mm. with, with different okay. symmetries. Yeah. You cannot map, not even a parcel, not even a... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can map uh, Minkowski space into Euclidean if you only at a slice of time. Okay. Because that is all space only. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is geometry. Of course, that yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. So that you can. Okay. But whenever, if you add just a little bit of tiny slice of time, you can you, you okay. can no longer map Minkowski space to Euclidean. Mm -hmm. So at some point, uh, even though, no, I'm just saying not that, you know, I'm saying you're wrong or something. I'm not saying that. No, no, your answer makes yeah. sense. Your answer makes but sense. a lot of uh, our intuitions and a lot of, you know, the, the feelings that uh, we gather inside of us when we think about ah this doesn't make sense yeah, how, how yeah, do yeah, i you yeah. know how do i reach an actual consensus without looking at the textbook how do i think of this term so that i explain on paper that yeah, yeah, this yeah, happens yeah, yeah. like this this particle goes around what does it mean to go around in a space that it's actually curved and so on i mean all these questions are very very difficult to deal with honestly yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for myself that's why i actually want to to study more just by myself uh this topic of differential geometry and so on the, but you know at some point i need to accept that you know l just look at the mathematics and stop no uh, yeah yeah of course if you look yeah, at the yeah. mathematics yeah the, um, at some point you know I, I i just have to do this because i don't know how to think of it so that i can speak of it and it makes sense yeah i yeah, can yeah. say that okay space is curved and uh, and so on but this is just a, it <laughs> it's just a tiny bit of yeah, yeah, the terminology yeah. that I can yeah. use to help me understand yeah, yeah, yeah. what happens. Like I literally cannot explain 
uh, okay, I can use the axis to see that if this moves with respect to the other, then if I moved into the other uh, reference frame, then the axis of the first one shifts so that I can, you know, explain uh, how the ticks of the clock, like, tick along the time and why does it slow down when I look at the clock of the other person that's moving relative yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this helps, but still, the ter I, I feel that the terminology is not, <laughs> is very, is very difficult to use to, to explain even very simple simple statements. Yeah, yeah, I very, very I to totally use. agree with that, and uh, for that reason, uh, to for well formulate my objection <laughs> yes, yeah, to relativity, yeah. I have to study differential geometry and. I don't know. Many yeah, more. yeah, and uh, definitely it's, it's it's an awesome, absolutely awesome topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to but delve it's in very... deeper. But and... yeah, at some point I feel as though you know reaching that point that you have satisfactory understanding. I don't think there is a point. Yeah, with it. yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, we need maybe Bantu to explain general relativity, yeah. or uh, yeah, you yeah. know, in English, it literally. I feel like the more that I look into it the worse it feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, It doesn't, yeah. And so, maybe quantum theory is even, even worse. worse <laughs> yeah. well. I don't know. Uh, but I think that this is in, interesting to understand that a lot of time we have intuitions that are simply wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, the fact that the Earth was in the center of the universe, doesn't moving around, mm -hmm. blah, blah. For na for in nowadays for us is totally wrong and is oh they were ignorant and they don't know they have this weird mm -hmm. belief but actually from a I mean futuristic point of view if you are on a car you see that is moving there's air mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you go on the street, you make a jump, you are again in the same position, there's no movement of yes. air. So it makes very... Yeah, a lot of sense. A lot of sense um, to think that Earth doesn't move. And that is crazy to think that Earth is moving. Mm -hmm. And I think that the same happened with relativity because we... Okay, speed of light is invariant mm -hmm. uh, within every the reference, rela frame, uh, reference yeah. frame. Uh, so, the, the light goes at the speed uh, compared to me that I'm seated on this chair, compared to the... The train that is yeah, going fast, uh, the rocket that is, that is going faster and, and think, so on. Well, how this... Yeah, exactly. Could be possible. Yes. We have different speeds. So, if I do the speeds of flight minus my speed, if I do the speeds of flight minus the train speed, we have different numbers. Yeah. And but uh, the compositional nature of speed is just an intuition, and we don't have. It's just an intuition, mm -hmm. and we can say no. It's not like that. You can have, uh, and for us is, and um, I think that we are in the same condition of people. Uh, at, uh, yeah, two thousand years. Ago. Yeah, two thousand years ago, who can't understand how hearts could be move around if they goes on the street. No, but I think we will always be at that point. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our yeah. experience, our literal, uh, you know, senses tell us. That yeah, the earth is not. Yeah, moving, yeah, so. of course. But mm, now we consider okay. Uh, no, we also have a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, we say that uh, for uh, inertia, inertia, yeah. inertia, uh, the hair move with uh, the hair. Mm -hmm. So blah blah. Even if I I jump. Uh, Concretely, I'm moving yes, also yeah, yeah. in the yeah. direction direction of the Earth, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, in general, it's very intuitive that. <laughs> also, yeah, if you're, if you're jumping and you fall back again, you actually move into one of the directions if you're not in the North Pole. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Even this happens, like with rockets, when you actually, yeah. Yeah, this is one thing that they did with, I think, even the Second World War, when they were... Um, 
uh, uh, throwing, not throwing, how, how the, the correct name I, uh, doesn't come to my mind right now, but they were trying to bomb, you know, a city that was like 30 kilometers away. Mm-hmm. And then you have to take into account, apart yeah. from the air friction, yeah. mm. the fact that the earth rotates yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then you have, you will start going into the east. Yeah. <laughs> if you're shooting the rocket and so yeah, on, yeah. because of Coriolis force and yeah, all, the, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we definitely have levels of um, levels of understanding. Our you know very uh, real human experience tells us something like yeah. that. But then yeah, 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 yeah. we we try to explain more. We need to refer to other sets of statements that explain this uh, this new empirical evidence and and so on and so on. But uh, yeah, it's maybe a never-ending cycle. Maybe you know we'll just have better and better instruments to observe new, more and more, uh, you know, to have more and more empirical evidence, get on new theories, build uh, new instruments that can observe new things, and so yeah. it's a never-ending yeah, yeah, yeah. cycle. Knows. Anyway, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, bah, I'm mm-hmm. thinking to a question for you, ah, I don't course. know if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about, uh, you, you said before that, um, um what is the name of the particle particle of light in english uh, photon? photon ah okay it's very yeah. similar yeah. 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 yeah um a photon move just in uh, the space, space and mm-hmm. not in time yeah and the first thing that i think uh hearing this is okay but then speed of light uh, should be infinite. Why is uh, 30 kilometers per if you, second? If you move inside the frame of the... So, okay, okay, okay. Let and me... No, my point is maybe the fact that the speed of light is not infinite, even if uh, she doesn't move uh, across time, mm-hmm. maybe could does this mean this, uh, that um, there are discrete quantities, there is not a continuum, but movement happen in a discrete quantities? Ah, okay, I, don't I, know. See, I, I see what you mean. This is a question that I have now, maybe it doesn't make sense. I, ah, no, 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 I no, have I, to reflect I, I definitely, I, I definitely see what you mean. So uh, regarding, no, I, I just want to make uh, that statement a little bit more understandable with uh, light doesn't travel along the time direction. So, for example, if, uh, you know, if we have, uh, like I said, the fourth uh, dimension, the time, di- time dimension is just basically a clock. You put a clock in every single point. So let's say we have uh, observer us, we're here, we're just sitting. Uh, let's say we're in space and not uh, on the earth so that we have problems with, you know, curved space and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we have small mass, so we don't need to care about the curved space around yeah, us and yeah. everything is Minkowski and so on. Even with the Earth, everything is Minkowski, like it doesn't uh, doesn't affect too much a lot of things. So let's say we are in space and uh, we are looking at uh, our, our, our rocket. I mean, the, the, usually it's this example, yeah, and, you know, yeah. we have a binocular and we see that actually the, the time, uh, their clock actually ticks slower than ours. Okay. So then, you know, the thing is that uh, you have this rocket that travels with this speed, it ticks slower. And then you have a rocket that travels even faster, it ticks even slower, and even slower, and even slower, and even slower, until you get to the speed of light where it doesn't travel at all. Okay. So from your perspective as a, you know, massive observer, time doesn't, you know, if you put a, a, a clock, okay, now we have problems that you cannot actually build a clock out of light or, you know, you cannot... Literally, you cannot put a clock on yeah, that yeah. <laughs> like you, need, you need mass to build a clock. Um, so let's say you have an imaginary clock on that photon, then it would, and you would look at that specific photon, the, the clock would not tick. But now, um, but now, yeah, when, so, you know, we have, we live, you know, we are observers, so we have three, di- three directions of uh, space and one of time. And now, the thing is that I'm not, me, myself, uh, if I'm taking my reference frame, I'm not moving into my reference frame. I'm always yeah. stationary. Yeah. So I'm in the center of my reference frame. So I'm only traveling inside the time direction yeah. with a speed C, yeah. one second a second. But, uh, and you know, I see I see that the light is traveling and with respect to me, it's, it, you know, it, my, my clock ticks so I can measure the distance that it travels and you know that, ah, okay, it's the speed of light. 
but then if I move inside the the reference frame of uh, of the photon, then you know it's this question doesn't uh, no the, uh, longer, yeah, 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 no yeah. longer makes sense. Yeah. It's, uh, it that you know with respect to me, yeah, my my clock works. So you know I I see the photon, it it travels like this, so I I can plot a line, and this line you know it's a, at a forty five degree angle with respect to the four axis. So you know the the photon moves like this, so it ticks. You know this is my time, my clock. Yeah, I represent yeah, it yeah. On, a, on a piece of paper, it's just a line that goes up and, you know, ticks at one second a second. So I see that the photon goes like this. So, you know, at this, at one tick of the clock, the photon is here. At another tick of the clock, the photon is here. So I can, I, on my axis, on my coordinate system, I can definitely assign a place. Yeah. yeah but yeah, if yeah. I move to the uh, coordinate okay. system, to the coordinate system of a, of a photon, I cannot map what happens to me right now. Yeah, okay. Because I cannot, I don't have the time direction that maybe, maybe uh, if I introduce a new coordinate system that is incredibly complicated, maybe it's mm. even impossible uh, mathematically, mm. maybe I can express everything that happens inside of this universe without referring to a space and time because whenever I talk about space and time in these terms with the Lorentz transform definitely I cannot use the same coordinates to express all the points inside of this manifold now if I move into the time uh, time coordinate system maybe if I explain instead of t x y and z t for time yeah, x yeah, y yeah, and z yeah. for the spatial directions and I use uh, eta, chi, uh, mu, and rho, that I, I don't even have an idea yeah, of how yeah, they yeah, are yeah. defined. Maybe every single point, every single interaction between a photon and electron, every single scattering, every single uh, you know, step that I do, and uh, every, everything can be, can be explained. Uh, can be expressed in that yeah, yeah, yeah. system. And you know, this event happened here in this point, and it's exactly this point. Yeah, and you know yeah, that yeah. the light can see, but uh, you know it, it, this is a timeless, timeless expressions of all the universe. So you'd kind of have to express the maybe the history of all the universe in, inside of these four uh, four coordinates, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whole history, and we don't know the whole history. So maybe if you are a photon, you would need to know everything that happens at all times ever. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, also yeah. the photons, the photons have like a limited uh, time span, you know, from our reference. Let's say, you know, the photon is being created now when uh, the atom, you know, the electron, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets absorbed into this other atom that is there. So it has a limited time span. So maybe you only need to express, uh, you know, a limited uh, time extent within the photon yeah, reference yeah, frame, yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. the yeah. full as we imagine that there is a full universe that started now and then the yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, but I would think, at least my intuition tells me, again, intuition, uh, feeling, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. science is done by feeling and intuition, you know, at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, my, my intuition tells me that you would need a completely new co set of coordinate system that can express the full history of what happens in between those two moments from our reference frame. And, you know, and then you need to also have this reference uh, reference frame. You know, you need to have the transformation that preserve. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. you need you need to be able to move from this photon to another photon, or you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I have to because I started to study relativity, mm -hmm. uh, special relativity. Uh, I think one years and some months ago. Mm -hmm. And I started with simple textbook and I think, oh, this is wrong. Oh, okay. And I started to talk with my physician mm -hmm. friends. Physicist. Physicist. Yeah. Friend. <laughs> Italians always say physician. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we are very bad in English. <laughs> um, and I started, oh, to understand this, you have to study this. Okay, I study this. Oh, in this, this don't make, doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Mm -hmm. Ah, because to understand this, you have to study this. And then, okay. <laughs> so, okay, I studied mathematics, I studied all fields yes. of mathematics, and then I will return to yeah, yeah, yeah. relativity. So now I don't remember exactly all, and I have to reflect yeah, yeah. more mm -hmm. on what you said and what I said. But yeah, I think that uh, in general I get the point of your mm -hmm. answer and yeah, I make 
unlucky really makes <laughs> sense. Uh, yeah, I, I would say because I think it's you know it's a nice question to to ask anyways. Uh, what you are asking, you know, why is it not possible for, to express uh, you know uh, the things that we see and experience uh, from the reference frame of, of a photon? I think it's a nice, and I don't have a full on answer. Maybe an expert in general relativity has, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe he can explain to you either in one minute or in uh, ten hours exactly yeah, yeah. why it's not possible. But um, uh, but yeah, I I, I think. Um, you know, just just pondering on on why it is not possible and so on. I, I really think it helps understanding. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And it's something that we are never taught in universities to do. You know, you are just mm. given courses and you're. You yeah, yes, so yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's a very fundamental, very fundamental yeah. thing that you are doing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. I, I definitely appreciate it yeah. and. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, photon. Who? It, it's an interesting question, honestly. It's a, it's a very yeah, interesting yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes you think. I mean, what do the photon see? I mean, the photon you know, doesn't have time, so. Yeah. And so, uh, I think that this is a very interesting question relativity, we all mm -hmm. for relativity, yeah, but of thinking, um, thinking. Uh, more precisely maybe mm -hmm. i don't know even at more simple thing like uh, electromagnetic mm -hmm. field yeah this is weird too because force that's acting di uh, at distance at a distance the source of the electromagnetic mm -hmm. field is here and influence the movement of uh, something mm -hmm. very far away. Yeah, but maybe right. non-verb, but, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a field, it's a field. So from yeah, that but view, yeah. this is weird too to, ah, to course, think yeah, because yeah, yeah. we, okay, I take this cup and I apply in first, but I'm touching the cup. I, how can... But, but, <laughs> it really, actually, I think that there are a lot. Of, for example, also energy. What is energy? Uh, if we look at the math, we have something that is yeah, some energy, yeah. but conceptual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is energy? Is I mean, uh, again, we come back to the true nature yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, so true nature, paradigm. So, yeah, paradig exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think that it could be interesting reflect on all of this. Yeah, of course, uh, of course. And I think the more fundamental fundamental stuff that we think about, the better. And uh, just to quote before we finish, uh, to quote, I think, Kuhn, uh, mm -hmm. who talks about exactly this. One second, just give me give me a moment. Yeah. Um, ah, I have to say one little thing mm -hmm. I think could be interesting. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, about Kahn, Kuhn, mm -hmm. that he speak, uh, as we said, about uh, revolution mm -hmm. in science and normal period and revolution. Yeah, exactly this, this, exactly this okay. I want to go quote, yeah. And it's interesting because uh, if we look at the age of Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. We we can notice that during a revolutionary period, mm -hmm. the average age is I don't know thirteen, thirty. Uh, 30. 30 yeah, 13, <laughs> thirteen is <laughs> too, <laughs> too much. Too, <laughs> too low. Yeah. Um, thirty. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly yeah, the number, yeah, exactly. but are very young person during normal periods. Nobel Prize are uh, so I don't know. 60, 80. Ah, okay, okay. During revolutionary times, it's yeah. because, uh, the age is lower because the younger people are more prone toward. Uh, they are denying or doubting. They have more doubting. novelty thinking. Yeah, 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 sure. Novelty. So, regarding this, which is exactly a point very related to what I wanted to say. So, uh, this is a quote from the book. Uh, for Kuhn, revolutions are a pretty rare occurrence and most science is normal science, where fundamental principles are not called into question and the ongoing work of scientists is fairly routine. Yeah, exactly. And it is basically what happens. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't really question, uh, you know, start questioning the big fundamental, like, yeah. you know, what is energy, is energy 
really conserved in every single scenario and so on. And that's why, you know, many people say that it's a waste of time to look into the fundamentals of quantum mechanics because, you know, as, at least as you're young, while you're young, you know, don't think about <laughs> it, just try to use it, try to use produce, uh, to produce results, make a career out of it, but don't... Uh, Okay. <laughs> don't doubt it too much because if you if you do like it's uh, it's such a fundamental thing that you know okay when you're uh, like you already have a career you can start thinking about okay it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. before that before that don't do it and um, yeah you know it's just a pragmatic thing and maybe maybe if we had like a um, like a generation of people that start you know but you like you need very 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 good grounds to doubt something so. At this point, you know, we have a problem with quantum mechanical thing, which is, um, uh, what was it called, the beta, I will, I will put it on the screen when I, uh, yeah, to, yeah, to refer yeah. to it. And, uh, you know, it's a, um, um, bet, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a thing related to the magnetic moment of the electron that, mm -hmm. you know, after a certain number of decimals, we cannot predict it. Um, as well like uh, and we have now four different experiments that have ruled it out like the way that we uh, express the electron using uh, mm -hmm. anyway Dirac formalism so on in the standard model it's not actually appropriate to express this uh, with uh, the number of you know the, yeah, 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 the experiment yeah. literally tells us that there is a significant difference between what we get empirically and what the mm -hmm. standard model mm -hmm. gives us so you know you really need a lot of uh, big big uh, experimental evidence to start doubting. So at this point, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. we have pretty good grounds of trusting uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, you know we take for granted. So maybe yeah, yeah, we are yeah. just very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. we are, we do have you know maybe um, black matter and dark energy and so on, but um, you know our it doesn't shake the ground of yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that much. I mean yeah yeah I'm I agree I agree and so. But uh, it would be nice. It would be nice to have like a generation of people that you know yeah, just yeah. you know I'm sick of uh, quantum mechanics. I hope you know, I really strongly <laughs> hope it, it would be it would be <laughs> just great. Yeah, yeah great. I have yeah a very dear friend of mine. Uh, you know he's always doubting. Uh, you know <laughs> quantum mechanics. And, yeah, no, I, I yeah. hate quantum mechanics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean too not, much. Too yeah, much, not uh, to say that uh, you know determinism 100 percent, but still. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah I yeah I am um, I I think that the I don't know if you know the Laplace demon. Uh, no, no. That Laplace is very no. good meta. Uh, analogy. Very good anal no analogy oh. example. Uh, okay. Uh, of what what does deterministic universe mean? Mm -hmm. uh, that is, if you are a demon that have infinite cognitive abilities mm -hmm. and know the and knows the point uh, and direction of movement and forces yeah, and yeah. Okay, yeah. whatever you can use mm -hmm. of every particles in the world mm -hmm. in the universe yeah. you can do uh, you can not only predict all the future development of the mm -hmm. universe but you can also understand all the past yeah. of the universe this is i think that the deterministic universe exactly mean this mm -hmm. because everything is uh, the consequence of something happened before and uh, and i strongly agree with, with this vision and quantum mechanics uh, say I no i agree with uh, yeah. 100% determinism yeah. as in we don't have free choice and all the other yeah 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 i think that ah. Uh, quantum mechanics can't, uh, the, they can say no, no 100% mm -hmm. determinism, but if we speak about free will, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can confirm that. Um, I, I have a very simple argument against free will, and I don't understand why people doesn't, uh, don't accept oh, okay, it. Okay. That is, we are made of atoms, and atoms follow the law of physics okay so where is my will in the laws of it if i if my arm go up mm -hmm. my arms is made of atoms so these atoms follow the laws the laws of physics okay. it's going up because some laws of physics where is my will there's no will there's only law of physics because exception made for 
for example, if we say that a human is not just matter, mm -hmm. we can say, okay, maybe some willingness. Yeah, I mean, could but if we think that we are matter, mm -hmm. we have a brain that is yeah, we, we definitely have neurons I mean, yeah. that are yeah. atoms. Because even I think I remember this that even in quantum theory, atoms is too big to have um, uh, the, the kind of problem that to have random in his uh, uh, you have to be more, you have to be more precise about that. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I remember I have to recheck oh, okay. something because, as I said, I started to study mathematics uh, and ah, I, I mean, I the, the, the scale There's, where um, the quantum effects come, come in is the quantum wavelength. Maybe. And the quantum maybe. wavelength uh, is uh, very small. <laughs> yeah, smaller than yeah, a, smaller an than atom. Yeah, smaller than an atom, exactly. So, so an atom, we can say that an atom's behave deterministically. Yeah, yeah, so for example, the the quantum wavelength of a hydrogen atom, you know, I think it's uh, very much smaller than even the radius of a proton. Mm, okay. I, I have to check uh, and I'll put the numbers on the screen, mm, but uh, okay. I, I think it is. And also, you know, the proton itself, it's uh, like, I think one, maybe 10,000 times smaller than the radius of the first uh, mm, electronic mm, uh, mm. orbital and so on. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we definitely have a lot of skills. So yeah. I can't understand why one person I mean, that I... accepted that we are made with atoms, atoms could say that we have free will. Because atoms <laughs> follow deterministic rule. Then there is nothing with with there Yeah, yeah no but, but if you if you take away fully, if you say that quantum mechanics doesn't exist, uh, you know, then you can definitely if you take this to be true in the in the most fundamental, you know, fundamentalist, uh, you know, in the most fundamentalist way, and mm -hmm. you din completely deny that quantum mechanics exists. Yeah, no, but why, why would you say that? You know, okay, we have this very small effect for atoms. But like cumulatively or on an ensemble, would you say that it definitely doesn't play any role in it? You know, but that, I'm I mean. saying that even with quantum theory, mm -hmm. if uh, with quantum theory and atoms, we can say that follow deterministic rule because it's very big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this cup follow deterministic mm -hmm. rule and uh, is, I don't know, of course, we have no certainty, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's difficult that I push in that direction, the cap to he... Yeah, flies away. Know, yeah, something. flies away. His behavior he, he, is deterministic. Yeah, yeah but what, what are the... I mean, you know, so the, the series of actions that you actually do, you know, you move your hand, what, where, where are these coming from? Oh, are we they can... Are determined by, okay, this atom moved like this, so now it should be no, like no, this. No, no, of course there like, are... You know, the, we, of course we can go... Of movements and so on, I mean... In how, more details, yeah, saying yeah. we have... Um, there's uh, uh, sodium uh, and iodium, is correct in English? Uh, iodine, I think. Uh, okay, well... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ions that flow in our brain, every neurons have a value of... Um, if the difference in uh, uh, electrical charge, uh, okay. I, I'm simplifying a little yeah, yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, but sure. uh, Claudio, thank you incredibly, thank you incredibly much for, for <laughs> this very interesting conversation and debate yeah. because we we went a little bit back and forth yeah, now yeah. for the end section about relativity. Yeah, in the last part but, I was a little bit confused no, because, too. but me too, me too. No, maybe no. in some month we will have a second episode. Yes, yes. When I came here to ah, say relativity is oh, wrong. Wow, wow. Oh, that, that would be, yeah. <laughs> now be I can great, say. It. it would be a great episode. <laughs> yeah. And only on this, only on this. Yeah. And uh, talking from the fundamentals up and yeah, uh, it yeah. would be great. And uh, thank you also for the very interesting conversation talking about the problems that science has and, you know, why you, why there should be a distinction between, like, scientism, that yeah. is, uh, like, believing the, truly for fact that everything science states is true, rather than uh, the crazy way of, uh, <laughs> if we cannot be 100% true, why should we believe at yeah. all? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, there definitely is a distinction. And, uh, yeah, for the other topics that we discussed. So I hope you also enjoyed listening and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.